speak our God. Let the light of redeeming shine through the clouds, our sins tonight as
Established in 1967, the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, or ASEAN, has grown to become a global actor. ASEAN member states are committed to work together towards peace and social and economic development. ASEAN is now the fifth largest economy in the world. This progress has lifted many people out of poverty, but the region is still facing many challenges. With at least 60% of the UN Sustainable Development Goals implemented at the local level, ASEAN's work needs strong involvement of mayors, cities and local governments. The ASEAN Mayors Forum is an important catalyst for this effort. The importance of your work cannot be underestimated. Over half of the world's population by now lives in cities. By 2030, the urban population is expected to reach 60% and much of this growth is expected to take place in Asia. The ASEAN Mayors Forum is a regional network of local political leaders who strive for local driven solutions for major challenges like climate change, natural disaster, economic slowdown and all other issues that concern people's well-being. Whatever ASEAN do has to complement what we're doing at the global level, what we're doing at the national level and for today, what we're doing at the local level. When we are united, we can have a stronger voice. We have us loud and clear. Join us at the ASEAN Mayors Forum to create a people-centred and forward-looking ASEAN community. and warm welcome to excellencies, all participants and speakers who are joining the ASEAN Mayors Forum special event plus China and India, enabling environment on climate resilience, local governments and cities commitment to tackle climate change. First of all, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Maria and I will be the master of ceremony for today. Please be noted that this event provides a translation feature from English to Indonesian and vice versa. Participants can press the interpretation button at the bottom of the screen. Select the desired language. For a brief moment, we would like to invite you to hear ASEAN anthem. We kindly request you to turn on your camera.
opening remarks. The Excellencies, Mr. Kong Poak, Deputy Secretary General of ASEAN for ASEAN Socio-Cultural Committee. The Excellency Ibu Armida Alishabana, the Executive Secretary of the United Nations Economic and Social Commissions for Asia and the Pacific. The Excellency Mr. Anis Baswedan, PhD, the Governor of Jakarta and Co-President of UCLG ASPAC. The ambassadors, the Committee of Permanent Representatives of ASEAN, representatives of national governments, local governments, and dear mayors, ladies and gentlemen, very, very good morning. Sawadika, magandang umaga, and assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I would like to welcome everyone to this uh, ASEAN Mayors Forum special event plus China and India, with the title of Enabling Environment on Climate Resilience, Local Governments and Cities Commitment to Tackle Climate Change. The ASEAN Mayors Forum began in 2011 and has been a strategic platform for cities and local governments to interact, to have a dialogue, and also to have a synergies to build ASEAN as one. AMF ASEAN Mayors Forum has been advocating the role of local governments and cities as the key players on sustainable development. IMF also, thanks to ASEAN, IMF has received the accreditation from ASEAN in 2018 and this is the only entity of local governments that affiliated with ASEAN. We really appreciate the big support of ASEAN for the ASEAN Mayors Forum. The COVID-19 pandemic, this really hard time for everyone, has brought devastations of millions of people Bloom. at the global Bloom. level. The role of local governments as a front responder in this crisis is challenge. This is a challenge for everyone. The leadership, the mayor commitment, and the capacity of local governments to respond and also uh, recover from the pandemic will contribute to the flattening of the curve and also restarting, restarting our economies as well as uh, recovering, uh, having a good recovery plans. Climate change challenge, in addition to the COVID-19, we have been facing also a big challenge of climate change. Climate change challenge is real and urgent, especially also in the coast uh, line cities where there are high vulnerable of the effects on climate change. Major urban areas such as in Bangkok, Jakarta, Manila, Ho Chi Minh, I can say uh, so many more cities, we have been facing this most uh, vulnerable regarding the climate change. And at the same time, the regions also include major areas of biodiversity, such as the lowland uh, rainforests uh, of the Indo, Malayan, archipelago, and, archipelago, and the needs to be preserved on the world. We know that local governments cannot work alone. We need a very good conducive environment to build a climate resilience for cities and society in ASEAN. This will depend very much on the big support and support mechanism given to cities and local governments. This can be in the form of um, regulations, institutional strengthening, as well as access to funding. We know that many, many cities have lack of funding. So we need to identify the important challenges. We know there are knowledge gaps as well as um, so many also good practices that are available in the world and of course in ASEAN. And this is also our kind of wish that best practices, 
a lot of uh, promising commitment of local governments and leaders can also inspire us and be sure that uh, we can have a more resilient society in this uh, region that we all love. Today's event is an opportunity, it is a very right time to move from commitment. Mayors have been showing a lot of commitments in tackling this climate change because this is, this is a real urgent and we need uh, action. So evidence-based plans and policies and adequate financial resources need to be put in place uh, in order to build a resilient infrastructure and prevent further losses, livelihood, losses of livelihood as well as natural habitats. So UCLG ASPAC uh, that also serve as a global confidant of mayors on climate change and energy uh, for Southeast Asia that raised the ambition of uh, cities and local governments uh, in reducing greenhouse gas emissions uh, and adapting uh, the impact of climate change. Um, the plan and actions uh, should deliver wider social, environmental and economic benefits. Ladies and gentlemen, UCHG ASPAC uh, in partnership uh, with UNHCAP uh, and GIZ in Bangkok we will also uh, be implementing the Urban Act programs uh, started in 2022 uh, to be funded by German government. This program aims uh, to uh, coordinate uh, the vertical integrations uh, between city and national institutions uh, on climate resilience. It will also advocate uh, good synergies. Uh, as I said, that local governments cannot work alone. We need a big support. We need a big support as well as um, um, support mechanism from uh, central governments, uh, particularly. So we will uh, advocate policies uh, and to synergize local and uh, national plans and actions, and promote uh, what. I call it as uh, important multi-stakeholders, corporations, uh, and this program uh, will be implemented in five countries, including uh, some countries in ASEAN. So again, I would like to um, invite all of you uh, to work together in tackling uh, the climate change uh, challenges. More ambitions and well-coordinated uh, climate actions uh, across a level of governments, this is very, very needed and is necessary. So the important role that uh, cities play in attaining uh, national and interna international climate goals um, cannot be denied. So when all levels of uh, governments utilize and synergize their capacities and resources, I think we will also uh, believe that uh, we can achieve much more together than uh, if uh, we work alone. With the spirit of uh, ASEAN solidarity, uh, in today's event, we will hear a lot of commitments uh, from mayors and local leaders uh, how um, we could tackle uh, climate change and how we can collaborate on the climate actions. So the, the event uh, will be also needed to uh, be used as an input uh, for the IMF declarations uh, 2021 as well as uh, input for uh, ASEAN Sustainable uh, Urbanization Strategies and definitely for these um, upcoming collaborative programs uh, under this uh, ICI Urban uh, Climate uh, Act project programs uh, that will be funded by German government. So I'd like to uh, conclude uh, my uh, remarks uh, by saying once more that UCLG ASPAC as uh, IMF Secretariat will continue to contribute uh, to achieve uh, urban climate resilience uh, by promoting um, partnerships among local governments and cities and key other uh, uh, strategic actors, uh, providing information on learning, exchanges, capacity development. This is all what we need. So what kind of future we want? This is also questions I like to ask everyone. What the kind of future we really want? Our actions today definitely will shape the future, will shape our tomorrow. The time to tackle climate change and adapting to the impact of climate change. The actions should be now. So at, at this shown in the ASEAN Anthem, I, I'm sure you also enjoy the ASEAN Anthems. 
we as ASEAN, as a community, ASEAN committee, we should uh, dare to dream big. Our dream should be big. So let's work together uh, to make our dream uh, for prosperous and happy of ASEAN community a reality. So I wish you a fruitful seminar and thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Kapungka. Terima kasih. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Dr. Bernadia, for the very warm welcoming remarks. Now, we will listen the opening remark video message from the governor of Jakarta province, His Excellency Anis Rashid Baswedan, PhD, governor of Jakarta and the co-president UCLG Aspect and AMF Secretariat, pre-memory. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Peace be upon all of us. Good morning. His Excellency Dato Lim Jokhoi, Deputy Secretary General of ASEAN for ASEAN Socio-Cultural Community. His Excellency Ambassadors, the Committee of Permanent Representatives to ASEAN. The Honorable Executive Secretary of the United Nations Economic and Social Commissions for Asia and Pacific. Dr. Armida Alishahbana, Dr. Bernadia Irawati Chandra Dewi, the Secretary General of AMF UCLG ASPAC, fellow mayors, panelists, speakers, and ladies and gentlemen. It is indeed an honor for us here in Jakarta to participate and share our concern. Therefore, on behalf of the Jakarta Capital City Government, I'd like to convey my gratitude for this opportunity to share our concern about climate resilience and how the local government and cities' commitment to tackle climate change. Cities have a great role uh, in tackling the impacts of climate change. City government has a duty to provide a livable living environment for its inhabitants. Uh, together, we should take bold actions about the urgency and the necessity of ambitious climate actions, not only as a single action by a city, but also as cities in Asia region, especially in ASEAN. So ladies and gentlemen, during the ASEAN Mayor's Forum uh, 2018 in Singapore three years ago, I emphasize why ASEAN matters and the need for cooperations. In ASEAN, we see a group of nations who can work together which makes ASEAN a very interesting and a unique uh, region. It is important for all of us to note that this cooperation is not only a formality. It is critical for our role in the world in the future. And Jakarta has been strong supporter of leading transformations in ASEAN local government since the first ASEAN Mayor's Forum in 2011, and we seek uh, to continue uh, this role. The challenges in Jakarta are tremendous, and the ASEAN cities face similar challenges, especially triggered by the impact of climate change, uh, such as flooding, extreme weather, and sea level risings. And now, with the pandemic of COVID-19, we have learned to be more resilient in every sense of crisis that we face in the near future. We must have a strong and adaptive and resilient approach. This includes addressing climate change impacts by making effort to reduce cities' carbon emissions. Ladies and gentlemen, toward the COP26 meeting in November 2021, Jakarta has put forward a proposal to reduce carbon emissions 
as concrete actions to achieve the National Determined Contributions, the NDC. It came up with two proposals to the United Nations in accelerating the carbon emission reduction program and in mitigating the impact of climate change. First of all, the United Nations could encourage countries to acknowledge achievement of climate actions at the city level and that achievement should be calculated as part of the national determined contributions of climate actions. Secondly, within the United Nations capacity, the organizations could lend a hand to foster vertical and horizontal integrations at actions and at policy levels. Ladies and gentlemen, taking into account the impact of climate change will be more massive in the future, accelerated actions are definitely needed. Jakarta has a strong commitment to be involved in the movement to tackle the global climate crisis. Since 2012, Jakarta government has taken serious actions by committing to make Jakarta as a climate resilient city. This commitment is part of our effort to support Indonesia national this commitment is part of our effort to support Indonesia's nationally determined contributions NDC that we commit to cut back greenhouse gas emissions by 50% in 2030 and zero emissions in 2050. And we here in Jakarta develop our own Paris Agreement compliant climate action plan into regional medium term development plan. We also put climate mitigations and adaptions as one of the regional strategic activities and form a special task force to oversee and to evaluate its implementations. Honorable ambassadors, mayors, ladies and gentlemen, in this kind of opportunity, Jakarta would like to ask the city leaders and city citizens across ASEAN to join the City Race to Zero movement, a movement for cities to give their best effort to achieve net zero emissions in 2050. Jakarta has joined its movement and initiated the translations of the campaign materials to Indonesian languages within the C40 City Network. The more countries, more city, more institutions, even individuals uh, joining the climate actions to reduce greenhouse emissions, it will definitely flourish more collaborations. And to push further the concrete work, Jakarta has adopted the City 4.0 approach. It's a paradigm that view government as collaborator and citizen as co-creator and it produce a collaborations to produce activities breakthrough that benefit everyone and within the collaborations we produce the Jakarta within the collaborations we produce the Jakarta resilient strategy and we are building a public space development program with the concept of resilient community ladies and gentlemen at last, I'd like to express my sincere appreciations to the AMF Secretariat, to the UCLG ASPAC for collaborating with Jakarta government to jointly organize this two days event of the ASEAN Mayors Forum. And this is indeed an honor for us to get involved. Hopefully, the ASEAN Mayors Forum will be a platform to elevate the voice of mayors to enable environment Hopefully, the ASEAN Mayors Forum can be a platform to elevate the voice of mayors on climate resilience. I genuinely believe that the spirit of ASEAN, the togetherness and the friendship of the people of Southeast Asia will flow. I genuinely believe that the spirit of ASEAN, the togetherness, the friendship of the people of ASEAN will flourish and will impress the world. 
from Jakarta with warm regard. Thank you for your attention. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Next, the opening remark video message from Her Excellency Armida Ali Shahbana, the Executive Secretary of the United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific. Pre-memory. Honorable Mayors, distinguished guests, I am pleased to be with you at the ASEAN Mayors Forum. We all know that Southeast Asia is among the regions most susceptible to the effects of climate change, and that cities across the region regularly bear the brunt of climate-induced disasters such as typhoons and flooding. Millions among ASEAN's urban populations are especially vulnerable including those living in coastal communities and along canals and rivers, and even megacities such as Jakarta and Bangkok are threatened by sea level rise. Realizing the aspirations of the Paris Climate Agreement requires actions across all levels of government, including energy efficiency, transitions to renewables, coal phase out, as well as resilient infrastructure, efficient transport, better solid waste management, and nature-based solutions. As local communities and national governments develop COVID-19 recovery strategies, now is the time to accelerate these actions and transition toward more equitable, resilient, and green development. And cities can lead these initiatives. But no government at the national or local level should act alone, and vertical integration of policies is critical. As countries update their nationally determined contributions, the role of cities must be well defined so that ambitions can be raised and realized. As cities plan to meet the needs from increasing populations and rapid urbanization occurring in Southeast Asia, they must align local actions with climate strategies and mainstream innovative, smart, low-carbon solutions. We know that the impacts of climate change fall hardest on the poor and vulnerable populations and that shocks and stresses, whether they be climate-induced disasters, economic shocks, or a pandemic, widen the inequalities that exist in our cities. ESCAP recent Economic and Social Survey of Asia and the Pacific 2021 towards post-COVID-19 resilient economies indicates that a K-shaped recovery is likely, with the poor and most vulnerable further marginalized. A commitment to tackle climate change cannot ignore these warnings. To ensure we do not regress on poverty reduction, recovery policies and actions, including those at the local level, must be inclusive so that we build back better together. In 20 19, ESCAP released the Future of Asian and Pacific Cities Report at the 7th Asia-Pacific Urban Forum held in Penang, Malaysia. Let me share with you the four policy pathways recommended in the report to guide communities towards urban resilience. First, scale up the use of nature-based solutions and resilient infrastructure in integrated urban and climate change planning. Second, understand the informal economy and support urban poor groups to be change agents for implementing city resilience actions. All groups, especially vulnerable populations, are stakeholders and must be part of solutions. Third, create and strengthen partnerships to bring more attention and resources to long-term urban resilience strategies that break silos between national, state, and local actors. A strong enabling environment must align strategies and eliminate policy gaps through multi-level governance. Fourth, utilize big data sources to connect communities, 
cities, and regions, and to improve local government technological literacy. Technologies and data should be leveraged to build smart, inclusive, and resilient cities. Honorable Mayors, building climate resilience requires your commitment and leadership. I hope that this forum helps develop a clear vision of what can be achieved and support you in promoting innovative solutions in your cities. I wish you a very successful forum. Thank you very much. The final opening remarks will be delivered by His Excellency Kung Poak, the Deputy Secretary General of ASEAN for ASEAN Socio-Cultural Community. Your Excellency, the time is yours. Uh, Dr. Benadir uh, Irwati Chandra Devi, uh, Secretary General of the ASEAN Major Forums and United City in Local Government Asia Pacific. Excellency Amida uh, Alicia Bana, uh, Executive Director, of, uh, Secretary of the United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific. Uh, Excellency Anis uh, Rashid uh, Baspedan, the Governor of Jakarta and Co President of the UCLG ASPEC, Secretary, Distinguished Guest. Development partners, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning. It is my pleasure to take part and welcome all of our distinguished participants to this ASEAN Major Forum special event. We are gathered all today to share insights and learn about the different ASEAN initiatives on enabling environment on climate resilient, local government, city uh, commitment to tackle climate change. Uh, today's event uh, would not be uh, possible without the strong commitment of the organizer and development partners. I wish to recognize the effort of the ASEAN Major Forums and the UCLG ASPEC, together with the strong support of UNSCOP and GIZ Bangkok for leading the Open Act Initiative, which target to enhance regional cooperation to develop low carbon and resilient city in the region. I would also like to warmly welcome our panelists and participants from ASEAN, China and India. We hope that today's discussion will make us rethink the role of local governments as gatekeepers of sustainable development, especially in championing climate-sensitive urban development. Ladies and gentlemen, this year marks a crucial milestone in our fight to combat uh, climate change. Uh, as we move closer toward the 26th UN Climate Change Conference of the Party of COP26 in Glasgow this November, it is timely to reflect and strategize how we can further raise our commitment to contribute to, uh, in the global and regional climate agenda. In the last few decades, uh, we have seen the rapid rise of cities in urban areas in the region, the fast expansion and exponential development of mega cities in Southeast Asia has resulted to significant environmental consequences. While city only occupies 3% of the world land area, these urban uh, land uh, areas consume 75% of the available resources, reuse 50% of all waste, and contribute around 80% of the total carbon emission. In ASEAN, annual CO2 uh, emission has increased by 6.1%, while the amount of waste generated will increase by 150% by 2025. On top of this, uh, cities in ASEAN are some of the world vulnerable to the impact of climate change and natural disasters. We welcome recent move by uh, some ASEAN member states to officially update the NDC target in time for this year, COP26, and we look forward for others to follow soon. We hope that more cities in the region will begin to strengthen the climate adaptation and mitigation policies and programs to complement this uh, renew uh, target. The race to zero must not only be addressed at the uh, regional and national level, as we are in the front lines in facing the impact of climate change, local governments must be able and committed to promote climate resilience at the local level. Over the years, ASEAN has identified strategic measures and implemented programs to mainstream green growth in urban areas, as outlined in the ASEAN Social Cultural Community 2025. We have seen remarkable progress in this target, especially through our work spearheaded by the ASEAN Working Group on Environmentally Sustainable City, 
particularly in two priority programs on sustainable urban planning development and implementation and increasing climate resilient and low carbon cities. Some of this recent initiative include the ASEAN Environmentally Sustainable City Award Program, where we recognize cities who have adopted eco-friendly policy and programs, as well as the high-level seminars on environmentally sustainable cities, where we promote the mutual exchange of best practices among green cities in the region. We have also partnered with some AMS to promote green infrastructure and protect urban biodiversities. We also look forward to our future work with different partners, including the EU supported Smart Green ASEAN City to promote smart technology and digital solution, the ASEAN multiple solid waste management enhancement with the German federal government to improve waste disposal and recycling in key tourist city, and the ASEAN OOK project on clean air for sustainable ASEAN to minimize the impact of air pollution in the region. Uh, all this effort also complement the launching of ASEAN Sustainable Urbanization Strategy or ASUS and the establishment of ASEAN Smart City Network uh, in 2018. Through ASUS, ASEAN has collaborated with uh, various partners uh, to support ASEAN City in undertaking uh, city diagnostics and developing action plans and project proposal within the ASUS framework toward achieving greener and more sustainable uh, city. Through uh, ASEAN, uh, ASEAN provides a platform for synergizing uh, development efforts and catalyzing cooperation where 50 projects have been developed and 40 partnerships have been uh, forged. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, today's forum serves as a window of opportunity to take stock and learn from each other's experience in climate proofing our cities. There's a wealth of knowledge and experience in the region, so let us take the opportunity to identify uh, initiatives that we can scale up and replicate in our respective communities. I strongly encourage our cities, uh, with the help of the ASEAN Mayor Forums and ASPEC, to continue this dialogue among key uh, decision makers at the national and local levels across various sectors, including the environment, finance, transport, economies, and urbanizations. At the regional level, I hope that this gathering will uh, also allow us to reflect on possible avenues for cooperation as we champion climate smart cities in the ASEAN region. I would like to invite you to closely collaborate with the ASEAN Working Group on Environmentally Sustainable Cities and ASEAN Working Group on Climate Change to further strengthen regional partnership in addressing these emerging issues. Beyond promoting cities to city collaboration, I hope today's event uh, will push us to better engage key stakeholders in our efforts to build more climate resilient and livable cities. With this, I would like to wish everyone a productive and fruitful discussion this morning, and thank you very much. Opening remarks. And now in this session, we will take a group photo. So, to all excellencies, participants, and speakers, please turn on your camera or video. The operator will take all the pictures of the attendees. Please turn on your camera and then give your best smile. We will take a group photo to all excellencies, participants, and speakers. Please turn on your camera or video. The operator will take all the picture of the attendees. So please, yeah, and if you're not wearing a mask, please give your best smile. Okay, I will count. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. <laughs> More. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay. Thank you very much for today's pictures. And now we will start our session and it will be directly moderated by Ms. Gita Shahrani.
Ms. Gita Syahrani is the Executive Director to the Secretariat of Sustainable District Association or Lingkar Temu Kabupaten Lestari, a membership-based association established and managed by district leaders in Indonesia since July 2017. Ms. Gita has a lot of achievements. One of her last achievements in two, uh, 2020 when she became the first Indonesian who selected as Henry Arnhold Fellow of Mulago Foundation, which recognized and support leaders with scalable conservation solutions. Our Excellencies, distinguished participants, please welcome Ms. Gita Shahrani. You may give a thumb, and Ms. Gita, the time is yours. Hello and good morning, fellow participants and also fellow delegates. Um, it is a great pleasure for me to be here and moderate the first panel, um, the General Assembly Panel for the ASEAN Mayors Forum special event, uh, Plus China and India. And we're about to embark on this very exciting topic as was conveyed by our opening speakers, how local government is actually paving the pathway to Per, uh, provide enabling environment on climate resilience and how local government is indeed becoming a key factor to achieve successful development in the Asian ASEAN community. And um, I'd like to extend my congratulations as well for ASEAN Sustainable Urbanization Strategy ASUS that has been launched in 2018. And hopefully this can become a pathway for all of the smart cities, sustainable cities network all over ASEAN, including our, my own country, Indonesia, to embark on a climate resilient future. Now, my name is Kita Shahrani. I am the head of the Secretariat for Lingkar Temu Kabupaten Lestari. We're also a district's association that's uh, promoting sustainable growth and working with um, district stakeholders in order to basically implement a lot of the planning that um, UCLG, ASPAC have uh, laid up upon, upon us. Uh, for this panel, I would be joined by three distingu distinguished speakers um, representing uh, three different countries. Um, first, I'd like to actually uh, welcome Dr. Medril Zam. Uh, Pak Medril Zam is a uh, Director for Environmental Affairs in the Ministry of Planning or BAPENAS in Indonesia. Good morning, Pak Medril. Good morning, Pak. Good morning. <laughs> Hi, Pak. And uh, yeah. we also have uh, Mr. Jarurot Pepaser, uh, expert on architect architectural planning, town and country planning, uh, DPT Thailand. And last but not least, we also have Mr. Epimako T. Denzing III, Undersecretary of the Interior and Local Government, Department of the Interior and Local Government, DILG, the Philippines. So this um, uh, hopefully also provide us with uh, contrasting narratives, um, yet an opportunity to syner uh, of synergy between Indonesia, Thailand, Thailand, Philippines, and other countries all across ASEAN, um, how do we then put local government at the heart and at the center of this movement towards climate resilience development pathway? Um, we'd like to actually uh, provide the first um, phase of this panel for presentation. And Dr. Medril Zam, uh, Mr. Jarurot, and uh, Mr. Epimako have prepared a presentation for us. Um, each would be uh, given 10 minutes to deliver the speech. And afterwards, we'll uh, head to the discussion phase, where um, all of you can also contribute your questions in, uh, through the chat box. And I will closely monitor it so that we can discuss it afterwards. Um, I'd like to first give the floor to Dr. Medril Zam. Uh, uh, the time and floor is yours for the first 10 minutes. Then we will continue with Mr. Jarurot and then uh, Mr. Epimako. So, Pak Medril, the time and floor is yours, Pa. I will give you a cue if there's one minute left. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Mbak uh, Gita. Um, Excellency Bu Armida, uh, my former secretary, so the executive secretary of the UNSCAP, Bapak Anis Baswedan, the government, 
the Governor of DKI Jakarta Province and Mr. Kung Pak, Deputy Secretary General of ASEAN, Bu Bernadia, my colleagues, Secretary General of US UCL Pak, all panelists, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good morning to all of you. Uh, thank you very much uh, for having me here. Uh, let me begin the slide here. Uh, yeah. Uh, colleagues, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as of today, uh, I believe we have seen the severe uh, impact of uh, pandemic that we are experiencing at the moment. Uh, certainly, this won't be the only crisis that we have to anticipate as our land, water and sea and our planet uh, environment carrying capacity at the moment is deter deteriorating. Our climate uh, has variably changed and hydro hydrometeorological related disasters events uh, have been increasing since the last 10 years. And we believe this situation will lead to another bigger crisis that we have to anticipate. And as one of the biggest country ar archipelagic country, uh, I believe Indonesia has also anticipated this future crisis. And through what we call the Low Carbon Development and Climate Resilience uh, Initiative. It covers all mitigations and adaptations actions while we also gradually uh, improve our uh, capacity in our means of implementation, in, uh, in particular in our finance capacity, technology, and capacity building. Let me begin to share uh, Indonesia experience by inform you all uh, uh, actually where we are with regards to our low carbon development achievement, in particular in reducing our greenhouse gas emissions and our uh, greenhouse gas emission intensity uh, reductions. As you have seen in the slide that uh, actually uh, we gradually uh, reach, uh, try to reach our uh, ambitions in 2020. Actually, we have our target ambitions uh, to reduce uh, about 26% in 2020 below our baseline. And we are also uh, at the moment uh, still uh, uh, struggling to reach our more ambitious target in our NDC in Paris agreements. Uh, but actually, as you have seen in the chart, uh, we are uh, in 2019, uh, we are still in 23.4% uh, 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 in 2019. And this is, uh, uh, we expect that we could reach our uh, target in 2020 uh, about 26%. And as, uh, uh, as a planning office, we also have been working quite closely with our meteorological uh, office as well, and also some researchers from the universities to create some projections of our climate uh, up to 20, uh, 2100. And and we, uh, from the results, from our uh, projections, I think uh, we need to be very, very uh, aware about uh, the future uh, uh, impact of climate change. If uh, we are still in a, a business as usual uh, 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 trajectory, I think uh, we, uh, we, we will be having a very, very severe impact of our climate. As we have, uh, as you can see in the chart, that. Uh, uh, that the using the RCP scenario 8.5, we will reach about 3.5 uh, degrees uh, in Indonesia, uh, uh, the, the temperature increase. And we also received about 1.5 degrees in 2100 if you still use the RCP 4.5. A lot of uh, climate change impact that we are going to have, and I believe uh, uh, this will create some uh, severe impact as well, and we have to anticipate this uh, start from now. Uh, actually, um, in anticipating this uh, issue, uh, Indonesia uh, has tried to implement the Article 3.4 of the Conventions that uh, emphasize that the climate uh, action should be incorporated in our uh, development uh, priorities. And uh, start from the uh, national planning in 2020, uh, we have already uh, Put the climate change as one of the uh, climate, uh, uh, one of the national development priority. We have seven national priority, and we put one of the national priority related to the climate change, and we 
uh, and we include the climate resilience and low carbon development as the one of the as two national program priorities that we are going to implement. With regards to climate resilience, we have five uh, as five sectors that we are going to pr uh, uh, prioritize: marine, coastal, water, agriculture, and health. And, and, and of course, uh, we have to link the uh, the ambitions with re related to the uh, climate resilience and low carbon with also our national targets. And at the moment, uh, we have already included the um, national macro development targets, uh, uh, which try to in, uh, include also the in, the uh, targets related to the greenhouse gas emissions and also targets related to the climate resilience. In climate resilience, we use uh, reducing potential GDP loss of affected sectors as one of, as our indicators of climate resilience. And this has been accepted as one of the macroeconomic indicators target as well. Uh, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, um, with regards to climate resilience, the topics that we are uh, discussing today, I believe uh, there are uh, several benefits that we uh, can uh, receive if we uh, implement this uh, immediately. Some of the benefits that uh, we can uh, experience or we can have, of course, uh, with related to the reductions of economic losses, uh, if we could anticipate this uh, climate impacts, I be we believe that we have already calculated this, this and uh, there, is, there are some potentials uh, that we can reduce our economic lo loss uh, with regards to the climate impacts. And there are a lot of other benefits, And but uh, since uh, we know there are a lot of benefits, if we do some climate resilience action interventions, still we need to have some priorities as well when we do these uh, interventions. And uh, we have uh, in Indonesia, we have um, done some exercise to put some priority locations and what sort of interventions in the priority locations that we have already exercised. Uh, well, this is the, um, the, the projections uh, that we uh, have already developed in our planning documents. So if we do some kind of climate resilience uh, implementations and actions, we can anticipate that we could reduce our loss from uh, 105 trillion rupiah to become just about 60 trillion rupiah. This is uh, uh, still uh, based on calculations prior to the COVID-19. Uh, 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 colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I think uh, in climate resilience, uh, my office has already released what we call the climate, uh, climate policy documents of the climate resilience development. And this is, has been launched in the 1st of April, uh, 2021. And we, uh, in this document, uh, we, we explain about some uh, priority locations, some implementations guidance, and also some monitoring and, and evaluations uh, aspects that we can use to implement the climate resilience uh, uh, aspects. And we really expect that all these uh, documents can be referred by all cities' governments or by all stakeholders when they uh, would like to do some uh, climate resilience implementations. Uh, in this uh, document, uh, we also create some top uh, lists, uh, list of uh, priority locations, uh, ranging from super priority that we have to intervene, uh, top priority, and also some priorities uh, uh, location as well. And this is some criteria that we have already used uh, to segregate uh, some of uh, the priorities for uh, priority uh, location interventions. And if you can see here in the chart, uh, this is one of the priority, uh, this is the priority locations of climate resilience uh, development uh, combined with several aspects related to marine, coastal, water, agriculture, and health. And as you can see, and, and colleagues from the cities, uh, I can share with you that uh, probably the data you can ask uh, in our secretariat, uh, you can ask uh, what sort of, uh, where the locations uh, exactly. And this is for the priority cities that need interventions uh, by our exercise. Um, at least the number of affected cities uh, in Indonesia is about 82 cities based on our projections. 
and while the populations uh, there are about uh, 3.1 million of urban people uh, need specific interventions uh, for this climate resilience aspects and uh, about 300,000 people lives in a city with super priority category and i think this is about 8.4 percent of the total populations of the cities uh leaks and ladies and gentlemen and uh, in this chart i can show you uh, what sort of cities uh, in indonesia which need a very very top uh, uh, considerations for priority interventions there are kota banda aceh gunung sitoli cilegon serang Banjar, Pekalongan, Surabaya, Probolinggo, Pasuruan, and Tual, and and this is uh, these cities actually needs a, a very serious uh, climate resilient intervention since uh, all these cities actually will uh, have been project, uh, predicted that will uh, receive a severe impact of our climate uh, impact in the futures. And what sort of uh, climate resilience uh, objectives that we are going to uh, achieve? Uh, basically, since the pandemics actually uh, still in the uh, in the high uh, mode at the moment, uh, and I think we need to anticipate the impact of uh, uh, pandemic crisis as well, and how then this pandemic crisis to be transformed into our. Uh, climate resilience activities for the future and i think one of the ob objective here is to create more jobs and in particular for green jobs for our cities uh, uh, communities or, or uh, populations and since we have uh, uh, sustainable development uh, objectives and so we have to combine the sustainable development objectives uh, and we have to uh, push this agenda into uh, in a very strategic and a very interlinkages, interrelated uh, aspects, and uh, and we believe that uh, one of the uh, main aspects that we need to to target is about the jobs, providing jobs. And since we see in the futures that uh, we need to also enhance our environmental quality and link to other development aspects, the green jobs. It's actually one of the climate resilient efforts that uh, probably we might to pursue and since this could also decrease our unemployment numbers reducing poverty and also decrease the urban uh, vulnerability uh, so, uh we um, Adriel? yes yep uh, just three I'm sorry just a re just a reminder one more minute thank okay. you uh, we would like to suggest for our uh, cities colleagues that uh, we need to implement at least four uh, major urban climate resilience strategies. First, relate, related to water resource management to fulfill our clean water supply in urban area. And also we need to anticipate the coastal and small island inundations in our cities. We have many cities uh, in the coastal areas in Indonesia. <laughs> and we also need to improve our climate smart agriculture and urban farming in maintaining our food productivity related to climate resilience food is very crucial and i believe uh, our urban farming and climate smart agriculture need to be enhanced as well in the futures and related to the health uh, i believe uh, we need to also increase our environment and community health to anticipate the increase of in particular the dengue high, uh, fever outbreak uh, and also another uh, climate related uh, disease and these are all the uh, more detailed interventions that probably uh, cities colleagues that could also uh, refer to and one of this is one of the uh, uh, slide that uh, the, the latest slide that i would like to share uh, in the future uh, actually we we have already received some severe impact as well to our social protection uh, program and i, I think uh, and at the moment the government is still preparing to combine the aspects of social protections uh, related to disaster re risk with disaster risk reductions and also climate resilience and we call it adaptive uh, social protections uh, uh, programs and we're still developing this and we would like to implement this program as well uh, directly uh, to the city's governments uh, as a closing remark um, I would like to underline the statement made by my colleague Bu Bernadia, and I believe I, I can share with you that we cannot just wait until the climate change crisis comes into our life. We have to act now and concerted efforts by national, provincial, and local government and all with all other colleagues. 
including the city's government in, in particular. These are required. We have to do it together and systemically from policies, planning to the implementations level. Thank you for all your uh, participation. Thank you very much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, uh, Pak Medril Zam. And the closing note was uh, very prominent and necessary um, to actually um, provide um, sort of a paradigm shift, shift that we don't have time to wait. Uh, it needs to be now and it needs to be concerted. And it's not um, purely one level only. It needs to be a systemic change where national, provincial and local government um, actually put synergy behind it. Now, um, from Indonesia, we move to Thailand. Now, uh, we'll give the floor to Mr. Jarurat, also another 10 minutes. Um, and I I'll cue you if there's one minute left. Um, the time and floor is yours, um, sir. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, um, crystal clear. Go ahead. Okay, thank you very much. I'm honorable at attendees, ladies and gentlemen. It is my great pleasure to join this morning session. And my name is Jarurod Kuprasad. I am a senior expert on architectural design and attend this morning session on behalf of the Department of Public Works and Town and Country Planning, or BPT. In short, um, the Ministry of Interior Kingdom of Thailand. First of all, I would like to share our experience and would like to elaborate about our work, what we have been doing that connected with sustainable development goals. Um, as you already may know, our main mission is urban planning. Urban planning is a multidisciplinary field in which planners work to improve health, safety, morality, and general welfare for the people and for the communities. And because of that, its cross-cutting feature, therefore, can be linked into almost, I think, every aspect of SDGs. Um, new urban agenda, the habitat tree, resilient city, uh, low carbon society, etc., etc. Um, firstly, uh, in a big picture, I would like to start with uh, our country's planning act. Because we acknowledge the importance of the global environmental issues, Therefore, we decide to revise our planning act to deal with uh, those um, this, uh, disruptive global problems. And our new planning act was enforced in 2019. And according to this act, We have two types of plans. The first one is uh, the policy plan. We have national policy plan, regional policy plan, and also provincial policy plan. The policy plan only apply to government sector. It means that if you are government agency, whether you work in the um, development se segment or you work in the conservation segment. For example, like uh, the transport ministry wants to launch the high-speed train network for the country or the ministry of environment wants to initiate like a uh, coastal zone protection project. Both of them have to comply accordingly with the policy plan as a physical, our physical roadmap, 
Um, this is to ensure that in order to move our country forward, each government agency have to use this policy plan as their roadmap. We have to have the same goal and every government agency gonna move forward harmoniously in the same direction. And the latter types of plan is land use plan. The land use plan apply to the society at large. The comprehensive plan and the land use uh, spatial development project can be classified as a land use plan. And I would like to send a message that as I mentioned earlier, we acknowledge the importance of global issues and the environmental issues concern us the most. Therefore, in both uh, policy plan and land use plan, we have incorporated several environmental problems, environmental issue as a must have plan components. For example, like uh, if you want to formulate the comprehensive plan for your community, you have to add the watershed management plan. You must have the natural resource management plan. You have to recognize the urban settlement and the community identity and diversify of that area. And if we talk about the community level, DPT also work together with local authorities and municipalities to initiate many, many um, special development projects that connect to SDGs as well. And surprisingly, we, DPT, and the local authorities also have the same view that we are global citizenship. Therefore, what we work with them at the local level is not a local thing. It's a global thing. Every small thing counts. Small change can lead to large results like a butterfly effect. I think my camera is not good. So sorry about that. Now we that. can see you. Okay, thank you. Uh, let, me okay. show you let me show you uh, two examples of our work with uh, local authorities. The first one is uh, Buri Lam City. This city located in the northeast of my country. And this development project, the local authority has an inspiration that uh, they want to challenge the green area per capita standard. Therefore, they work with us to provide as many as open space and as many as green area for their community. The another one is uh, Chantaburi city. This city is uh, located in the eastern part of our country and it has a distinctive wetland. I mean, they have the mangrove forest. So we work with the local authorities uh, to develop like a eco-tourism industry to promote that in that area. And uh, lastly, DPT now, and also many government agencies in Thailand, we collapse with the GIC agency 
to perform like a research and development up on environmental issue. This to create the country's urban act and the project will start next year. And uh, I think that will be all for my sharing my experience today. Once again, uh, it's my great pleasure to join this session. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Jarorat. And thank you so much for also sharing um, that actually what you mentioned, um, synergy between policy planning and land use as well as special planning is indeed are being adopted in different cities and areas all over Thailand. And hopefully this type of systematic change and this type of prioritization um, of what the regional or local government really needs um, can actually be translated into a real project that you said are going to groundbreak next year. So good luck for that. Um, now we move to the Philippines and I'd like to give the floor to Mr. Epimako. Um, again, another 10 minutes and I'll cue you when there's uh, one minute left. Um, the time and floor uh, is yours, sir. Yeah, thank you. I have some slides, please. A few slides. Okay. Um, yes, the slides are coming. Uh, we can see you clearly. Um, I think the comedy will uh, help uh, share your slides. Is that correct? Yeah, please. Uh, it's, uh, it's the organizers, my slides. Uh, there are just a few slides. Yeah, we're quite excited to also hear the progress from the Philippines. And for all of you that are tuning in, we have almost 200 participants joining us. And uh, feel free to actually raise, uh, use the raise your hand uh, button. And then we can maybe select one or two of you um, to deliver your questions directly to the panelists um, during the discussion session. Or um, if you prefer, you can also enter your questions in the chat box uh, using the format, um, your name, and then uh, what are the questions, and this is addressed to uh, which uh, panelist, um, so that at the end of the uh, presentation, we can uh, discuss uh, things that might be interesting from the participants' eyes as well. Um, and the committee, is the slides ready for uh, Mr. Epimako? Everybody, a warm good morning yeah. uh, to my co-panelists, Dr. Uh, Medri Zalam and Mr. Jerurut uh, Fu Prasep. Uh, good morning to all participants, uh, the governors and mayors present this morning. Uh, it's uh, I'm happy to uh, to share to you the Philippines experience vis-a-vis uh, -vis or with respect to how we are doing or addressing climate change in our country, uh, considering that we are in an uh, not a not an enviable position of uh, being uh, ranked third in terms of uh, worldwide, in terms of uh, disaster risk. Uh, way back in 2018, the World Risk Report uh, of the World Economic Forum has, uh, has ranked as third worldwide in terms of disaster risk. So in, uh, with that, we are, must always be prepared in addressing uh, climate uh, concerns uh, in our country. Uh, the Philippines is always being visited by at least 22 or between 22 to 25 uh, typhoons a year. And uh, uh, we are also considering, the, this is also considering the fact that 60% uh, of the land area or uh, in, in our country is really susceptible to, to disasters. And because of this geographical location and the physical environment of the Philippines being located along the typhoon belt in the Pacific, the country is very susceptible to natural calamities and disasters such as typhoons, tsunamis, uh, storm surges, among others. Uh, occurrences of these uh, and magnitude of these disasters are further exacerbated by climate change, which pose added threats and dangers to the Filipinos. Uh, because of this, again, disaster risk reduction and climate change adaptation are priority thrust of the government for the last 10 years. And in fact, uh, we've already instituted uh, uh, laws to be able to protect our countries to the, to the our country to these uh, uh, disasters. No? Part of this is Republic Act uh, 9729, which is, which is the Climate, Climate Change Act of 2009, and Republic Act uh, 10121, which is the Philippine Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Act of 2010. So clearly, its preparation uh, is very key for us to be able to reduce 
uh, at least deaths whenever disaster struck our country. These laws were passed to provide the overall framework and the institutionalization of a whole of government approach on systematically addressing the growing threats of climate change and disaster uh, on our communities and the environment. The passage of these laws and integration of uh, risk reduction and climate change adapt adaptation uh, uh, in the country's national development plan was already embedded. Uh, in other words, this is already a key element in our yearly or medium-term development plan for us to be able to coordinate and strategize and implement measures of interventions towards the increasing resiliency of the Philippines in addressing or mitigating impacts of natural disasters um, and climate change. And uh, recognizing the importance of the role of local governments on risk reduction and climate change adaptation, various interventions are being undertaken by the national government to continuously increase capacities of local governments in responding to climate change and disasters, especially in safeguarding the welfare of communities and ensuring unhampered delivery of basic services within the respective uh, localities. Uh, among others, uh, these include uh, many aspects of governance. And uh, uh, what we intend to do right now is uh, uh, make sure that the disaster risk reduction and climate change adaptation in local land use and development is, is embedded. And uh, uh, as the agency that supervises the local governments in our country, we make sure that in all budgets, in all plans and programs and uh, on an annual basis of lo local government years, uh, disaster risk reduction and climate change adaptation is something that we'll have to prepare for on a yearly basis. Local governments, particularly cities and municipalities, are mandated by law to prepare their comprehensive land use plan and comprehensive development plan that serve as uh, mother plans or blueprints in facilitating sustainable spatial and multi-sectoral development in the locality. And this is guided, uh, these policies are guided uh, by the Philippine national government and uh, other agencies included are the DILG or the Department of Interior and Local Government, the Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development. Of course, the local government units, they are all enjoined to ensure the mainstreaming of climate change and synergy with disasters risk reduction in the planning process and mechanisms through the use of various tools and strategies such as our climate and disaster risk assessment uh, to ensure formulation of climate sensitive and risk informed local development plans. Uh, the mainstreaming of this risk reduction and climate change uh, adaptation in local planning process facilitated the identification implementation of appropriate measures and programs to strengthen climate and disaster resilience in the locality. And uh, in support to this endeavor, national agencies are cons constantly providing capacity building interventions and technical assistance to local government units. On a regular thing, we continue to supervise and monitor the performance of our local government units in terms of disaster uh, preparations, and uh, what, we, what we're trying to do right now is before, because of our monitoring of uh, typhoons and uh, potential disasters, um, preparation is key. That's why we always make sure that our local chief executives are present when there is a potential typhoon or disaster coming to a specific locality. We give them directives not to be absent. So the physical presence of our leaders or local chief executives is one key element for us to address uh, issues of disaster, uh, uh, risk reduction, and of course, more importantly, on a long-term basis, uh, climate change. In the first quarter of uh, 2021, for instance, 21% of our cities and municipalities in the country are reported to already have what we call climate-sensitive and risk-informed development plans. On the other hand, 27% of our cities and municipalities have risk-informed land use plans as of the second quarter of 2019. And more importantly, uh, uh, we're trying to make sure that the information dissemination when uh, potential disasters uh, and typhoons would strike to our country, we inform the people about these possibilities. And doing that, uh, we'll be able to minimize uh, potential uh, deaths 
uh, during typhoons and disasters. We are also institutionalizing or the, what we call the assessment tool for risk-informed uh, CDPs. And uh, uh, in 2018, the Philippine national government, through the DILG, jump-started this institutionalization among cities and municipalities. This assessment tool aims to further strengthen alignment of local development plans and investment programs across various levels of governments and reinforce compliance of local government units with pertinent policy guidelines with respect to development plans. In other words, we have what we call an assessment tool to be able to enhance and integrate relevant disaster risk reduction and climate change adaptation indicators uh, in the review and having this what we call review parameters. Again, this is key because uh, uh, being in this not so good situation of uh, a country being uh, visited by many typhoons and disasters really Clear, it is clear to us that preparation is key and our ability to assess and evaluate our situation on a regular basis. More importantly, we have already implemented what we call the climate change and expenditure tagging. This is to support mainstreaming of climate change adaptation and mitigation into the planning and investment programs, our processes of our local government units with the national government unit implementing the CCET uh, initiative. And it's good for us because as early as 2009, we already have a climate change commission, which uh, to, to some extent has already organized uh, our way of uh, adapting to climate change. And the many of the government uh, ways of formulating the programs, projects, plans, and strategies of uh, uh, the national government agencies, or more importantly, the local government units, they are through the uh, climate change commission, these are now integrated into our local programs. The results of our CCT serves as mechanism from which progress in the implementation of climate change initiatives of local governments can be measured as it provides a snapshot and analysis of the LGU's climate inter investments to include but not uh, limited to the following. Uh, for instance, the amount of climate change adaptation and climate change mitigation investments, the total number of uh, climate change adaptation and climate change mitigation programs, plans, and actions, the alignment of the local government units in investments in the National Climate Change Action Plan in the percentage of climate change adaptation and uh, mitigation investments in relation to the total investments of the local government units. Uh, in, in fact, uh, moving forward, the Philippines uh, will continue to undertake efforts in strengthening the country's uh, policies to ensure climate change resilience, uh, the capacities of the local government units as well as local communities to further be enhanced as, uh, as uh, effective and uh, partners of the national government in facilitating sustainable and resilient development amidst the impact of climate change and disasters. In other words, in summary, what we have been doing in our country, considering that we have already accepted the fact that we are really a disaster and typhoon prone country, we have uh, made it a point for us to be very, uh, for us to be prepared in our uh, annual way of uh, addressing issues of typhoons and disasters. And again, we have been fairly successful the past few years, especially in the last five years and this, under this present administration, because uh, the human resource side, the leadership has, has always been there. It is no longer absent whenever disasters struck a specific local government unit. And we ensure that on a yearly basis, we monitor that all the infrastructure needed, the budget needed, the plans and programs needed by the local government units are there. In other words, the key element here is the, our agency's ability to monitor and ensure that the, that the investment plans, programs, and infrastructure are there in the local government unit. And the monitoring that before a typhoon or a disaster potentially strikes our country. We are there. Uh, uh, and uh, again, we are proud that we have been doing this. And I do hope that this can also serve as an example from our neighboring countries uh, because of our example. But we're also willing to learn from the other countries on how they adapt to climate change and, uh, of course, how to they address uh, whenever typhoon or disasters struck their areas. And this is a good uh, avenue for us to be able to share 
uh, our knowledge in addressing climate change and how we are able to adapt uh, and make ourselves resilient and to be strong uh, whenever disaster reaches our, our respective countries. So a uh, change really is important and the change really is in the leadership and in how we address uh, issues concerning uh, disasters and climate change. And uh, again, uh, just to repeat, uh, we thank uh, uh, the ASEAN community uh, for giving us this opportunity to share what we know, uh, our knowledge, and more importantly, from on our side, uh, uh, learning from the other countries' experience within our neighboring uh, nations. So thank you very much and a good morning. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Epimako. Um, it's a uh, very heartwarming uh, progress updates as well from the Philippines. And I love how Philippines have actually integrated not only the special plan and development plan, but also the investment pathway and how investment can actually be a, a strong support system to whatever climate change adaptations and mitigations actions that have been uh, mapped out by the local government. Now, um, we're um, a bit tight on the Q&A sessions, but there's time to um, ask you one or two questions at least. Um, uh, one question that uh, I've received in, uh, in, the, in the private chat um, is uh, basically looking at uh, all of this different level of planning and synergy that um, both all Indonesia, Thailand, and Philippines have uh, shared about. What are the key barriers to entry in a way to make sure that whatever guidelines that have been set out at the national level can actually trickle down to the local level um, efficiently and effectively? So the question is much more on the barriers to entry. Uh, but I'd love if all of the panelists can also share uh, what are the key solutions you think um, can be introduced to address those barriers. Maybe we can start from Thailand and then we'll move to um, Philippines and then to Indonesia. Uh, Mr. Jarorot, um, any uh, thoughts on that? Yes, uh, as I mentioned before, why we decide to revise our planning act. Right now, I think in the national level, we have, we have uh, actually not, not yet, but we are on process to formulate our national, first ever national policy plan. And, and the policy plan is gonna be supervised by the national board and I think every in, 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 in that board all important government agencies uh, include and also our prime minister act as a chairman of that board. So I think uh, from the bottom up starting from the national level up to local level and what we are doing now when we work with the local authorities or municipalities, that's the bottom up. I think mm. that, that linkage line gonna be stronger and stronger in the near future, hopefully. Yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Gerurot. So linkages and actually facilitating the process between top down and bottom up um, is key for Thai uh, Thailand. Um, exactly. Any thoughts on that from the Philippines? Yeah, first of all, it's very important that we institutionalize the policies no, on disaster risk reduction management and uh, co uh, climate change adaptation. And we did that by, uh, uh, by passing two important laws in our country uh, 12 years ago. And because of the policies have been institutionalized, the next thing we, uh, that needs to be done is to implement it. And on our case, uh, through, uh, through the various agencies, specifically ours, the Department of Interior and Local Government, we now create the specific memorandum circulars to be able to, ins to monitor or to implement or that the local governments implement the national policies. And it took us um, quite a number of years to be able to organize and ensure and there were a lot of manuals that we had to, to, uh, to draft and immediately made into memorandum circulars to be adopted by the local governments in our country. Uh, all 1,715 local governments from the provinces, cities, and municipalities have adopted 
these manuals, uh, policy manuals, yeah. and operational manuals that we have for purposes of addressing uh, risk reduction management and uh, climate change. And it was it, at this point in time, it's just a matter of uh, implementing and us monitoring that they mm. <laughs> that it, uh, is implemented. And we also learn from our mistakes. So you know, whenever a disaster struck and some operational procedures are not applicable, we make the necessary adjustment. Yeah. Can I maybe push a little bit on that? Um, is there any um, tangible incentives uh, for the local government themselves um, to actually motivate them to keep being consistent, implementing, and also reporting to um, your department? Yes. Uh, every year uh, since 2014, we've been handing out what we call the seal of good local governance, the SGLG, and that that specific program is now institutionalized into law uh, last two years back. No? Uh, we give incentives to local government in terms of additional funding uh, for purposes of them uh, institution, uh, putting on the infrastructure uh, to, to, uh, for purposes of addressing uh, uh, disaster risk resiliency. So there's really an incentive and yeah. that has been institutionalized already through a law. Thank you so much uh, for that comprehensive um, updates as well. Um, going to Indonesia, Pak Medrizal, Medrizal, the same questions. What are the barriers and what do you think can be the solution to make sure that the green economy and low carbon development pathway that uh, our RPGM and have laid out um, can actually be implemented um, at the local level? Yes, thank you, uh, Gita. I think I would like to underline our colleague from the Philippines, Mr. Epimako, uh, that has already stated that institutionalize the climate policies into the uh, policy, uh, into the local government policies. Actually, is a very crucial uh, uh, issue at the moment. And I think I believe uh, we still need a very strong uh, political commitment by the local leaders, as uh, as they have to become the champion of their their their, their areas. And uh, without the political commitments by our local leaders, I, I believe it is a bit difficult for us in the central or even national government to craft the policies and mainstream the policies into the local government levels. And uh, besides the political commitments, I believe uh, this is also very crucial since we are talking about climate change in a very long time, about the capacity building uh, support. Uh, the capacity building also uh, is a very crucial aspect to be built, uh, not just in a national level, but uh, also at the uh, at the local uh, government level as well. And this is related to uh, the understanding of how then the importance of climate issues uh, is crucial for uh, for the uh, local and for the city uh, government and for the city areas. And last but not least. The financial aspect is also very crucial, and I think uh, since uh, we still have uh, a lot of uh, things to be financed in our developments, not just about climate issues, but also other aspects. But uh, I think we still, uh, this is, uh, I would like to underline, this is the, the, the importance in how then the climate aspects link to the development aspect. It's not just about environment issue, but climate is a development issue. So then we could also prioritize the, the climate change as also uh, in, in, uh, in, uh, in the same position or in the same level in other development targets as well. So that's why we try to mainstream and include the climate change into our national priorities. Uh, but still, we would like to pursue that the, the climate uh, targets still need to be prioritized in yeah. the, the planning document as well at the local level. So then it could be prioritized uh, for the financial uh, uh, prioritization as well. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much, Pamedriel. That's such an interesting take as well to look at um, climate crisis, not only from the environmental lens, but also from a development lens that is critical for both economy and social targets. And that's why it should be given priority um, or even more priority because it uh, is a foundation uh, towards a, a, a healthy economic system as well. Um, now, last questions before uh, we end um, is,
Uh, you mentioned uh, the word reporting and um, incentives. We, uh, the Philippines also have an incentives in place. And um, can you maybe share uh, a thing or two that right now is ongoing in uh, all of the country and Thailand and Indonesia and the Philippines? Um, how do you then make sure that the shared targets um, of sustainability and climate crisis and the shared reports um, of progress that uh, local governments submit doesn't only look at it from the government lens but also from local stakeholders lens how it how can it be a shared contribution and a shared progress effort uh, that's recognized also by the private sector by civil society by the community at large um, maybe uh, the Philippines uh, do you want to start um, yeah, Mr. Epimako. Well, first of all, uh, yeah, that's very correct. Uh, since we are applying a whole of nation approach, uh, even the ordinary Filipino, the ordinary citizen, must be must form part of uh, our programs in addressing these issues. That's why when we do our, uh, the local governments make their local projects uh, planning. Uh, the ordinary, the civil society organizations is part of it. So, in other words, the non-government individuals are part in the whole process of crafting the plans and programs on an annual basis, including the budget need to be able to uh, uh, prepare for a potential disaster or typhoon uh, that is coming. And more importantly, as a feedback, on an annual basis, and in all our local government units, we have what we call a citizen's uh, satisfactory index, which also forms part as a citizen feedback on how the local governments are performing. It, it focuses on many issues of local governments, which includes uh, disaster risk uh, uh, preparations and climate change adaptation. So we get that regular feedback, and this is part of the way we are give, uh, We tell our local government officials as a feedback mechanism uh, from their from the bar, from their uh, residents or citizens in their local government. Thank you so much. So this index is actually also measuring whether uh, whatever the government is doing is aligned with the priority of the people. Um, any type of um, systemic uh, framework that is introduced in Thailand um, to accommodate that concern as well, uh, Mr. Jarura? I think uh, the key factor is public participation about uh, our work. If comprehensive public participation with uh, almost every sector of the society at large. I mean, we have to link also link with the academic section. And we have like a volunteer group. And I think luckily, now today it's uh, like uh, in the heart of many, many people in Thailand, they just like a paradigm shift, mean uh, everyone now recognize the importance of global issues. And they, they, they view that as the first priority to deal with. And whatever we do according to our work, the urban planning, every aspect of the sustainable goals and also the environmental issue will be I think uh, will be will be will be raised in every public that, That's the key piece for for each community to to have and to have their view and moving forward. Thank you so much. Um, the key is public participation. I couldn't agree more. Um, any thoughts from uh, Indonesia, Pak Medril? Yes. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think I would echo uh, with uh, previous two speakers, and I would like to add on that that uh, for Indonesia case, uh, actually, in, in uh, low carbon development initiative, we have already created some instruments since 2010 to provide some kind of monitoring and evaluations uh, for all the performance of our emissions, uh, greenhouse gas emission reductions. And uh, until today, uh, we, we use IoT now. Uh, so I think in 
in 2010 we still submit the letters and then provide reports with papers and but right now everything's go into the iot so then uh, all local governments provincial governments can provide report directly from the desk and uh, for the climate resilience uh, we are still developing the the the, uh, the the instrument and the mechanisms and again it will rely upon the iot technology so then uh, all the uh, sectors, uh, related sectors, would could provide reports, and we really hope that uh, in the future, climate, uh, the the sorry, the city governments can also participate in this uh, monitoring and evaluation schemes. That's what we call Aksara monitoring schemes and evaluations in our systems. Thank you, Mbak Gita. Hey, um, this is very uh, a, a great note to sort of close the opening panel with. Um, we can see a synergy between different countries in ASEAN that also prioritize not only looking at it from one dimension, only the environment, but actually relevant issues that become that that are increasingly becoming populous for each country. Now, um, if you were um, each panelist, give uh, if you were to give one word, just one word that you would um, uh, highlight as key takeaway, what are the most important step that everybody in the audience should take after hearing your um, insights and sharing? Uh, what would that word be? So that's my last challenge. Pak Medril, do you want to start with the one word? Together. Together, okay. Um, Mr. Epimako? Uh, resiliency. Resiliency. Um, and last but not least, uh, Mr. Jarura. Okay. Open-minded. Open-minded. So we got open-minded, resiliency, and uh, together. Thank you so much to all the panelists. I've closed the session with also a poem. <laughs> so this is my um, um, usual habit. Um, so I'll take the word resilient. That's one, one word from me. The R stands for regional specificity to any climate resilient strategy in all level is very relevant. The E stands for environmental concern is not the only dimension to climate crisis. The S stands for synergy between climate crisis and disasters are an effective entry point so that it's relevant to all ASEAN countries. The I stands for information dissemination and feedback can make use of new technology, including IoT. The L stands for linkages and mainstreaming between national, provincial, and regional government needs to start now. The I um, stands for investment pathway needs to also be aligned as a support system. The E stands for enabling ecosystem built from institutionalizing policy and governments is indeed a critical step. And N uh, stands for the numbers of climate change adaptation and mitigation actions by local government can be consistently implemented through tangible framework and incentives. And the T stands for targets needs to be agreed not only by top leaders, but also understood and supported by local stakeholders as she shared goals. And that is where we give a chance to synergy on climate resilience. Thank you so much to all the panelists, to all the questions and participants. Um, my name is Gita Shaharani, the head of the Secretariat for Lingkar Temu Kabupaten Lestari. Sorry for all the mistakes and enjoy the next part of the session. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Gita. Thank you very much. Bye bye. See you bye, later. everyone. Thank you, Ms. Gita. Dear all participants, now is the time for a five minutes short break. We will return and continue with the session 1A. We will listen all the mayors share their experiences on climate action. During this short break, we will show you AMF video. Enjoy. <laughs> Established in 1967, 
the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, or ASEAN, has grown to become a global actor. ASEAN member states are committed to work together towards peace and social and economic development. ASEAN is now the fifth largest economy in the world. This progress has lifted many people out of poverty, but the region is still facing many challenges. With at least 60% of the UN Sustainable Development Goals implemented at the local level, ASEAN's work needs strong involvement of mayors, cities and local governments. The ASEAN Mayors Forum is an important catalyst for this effort. The importance of your work cannot be underestimated. Over half of the world's population by now lives in cities. By 2030, the urban population is expected to reach 60% and much of this growth is expected to take place in Asia. The ASEAN Mayors Forum is a regional network of local political leaders who strive for local driven solutions for major challenges like climate change, natural disaster, economic slowdown and all other issues that concern people's well-being. Whatever ASEAN do has to complement what we're doing at the global level, what we're doing at the national level and for today, what we're doing at the local level. When we are united, we can have a stronger voice. We have us loud and clear. Join us at the ASEAN Mayors Forum to create a people-centred and forward-looking ASEAN community.
Welcome back, all participants and speakers. Next, session 1A, and will be directly moderated by Dr. Bernadia Irawati Chandra Dewi. Dr. Bernadia Irawati Chandra Dewi is the first woman secretary general of the UCLG's regional section. She has been working in urban development and related fields for more than 15 years. In 2015, she was appointed as a member of the advisory group on gender issues of Unhabitat. She was selected in 2018 by Gov Insider Asia as one of the prominent women whose work made an impact in Asia Pacific. Dr. Bernadia received her PhD in urban engineering from the University of Tokyo, a master's degree in atmospheric physics from Nagoya University and master's degree in public policy from the National University of Singapore. Please welcome Dr. Bernadia. You may give a thumb. And without overdo, the time and floor is yours, Dr. Bernadia. Welcome back, uh, dear participants, and welcome to the session. Uh, hearing the commitment of uh, leaders uh, from uh, ASEAN uh, member states, uh, uh, cities uh, leaders, and as well as uh, uh, Chinese uh, participants uh, who will be also sharing the experience uh, from Guangzhou. And this is going to be very, very uh, exciting uh, session uh, since uh, we will be hearing uh, from the mayors uh, from Iriga, from Bag uh, Bogor, as well as from Gorontalo, and also uh, Mayor uh, Prick uh, from Thailand, and then also from Guangzhou. I, I think it's, uh, it's very clear uh, uh, what we heard uh, this morning, uh, how local governments play a very, very critical role uh, in uh, sustainable development, especially uh, in addressing the issue of climate change, uh, adaptation and mitigations. Um, when we talk about the SDGs itself, 60%, uh, 65% to 70% of uh, SDGs uh, must be implemented at the local level. This is why um, we, we, we also would like to address uh, one of the uh, uh, SDGs, which is uh, SDG 13 on climate change. Uh, and also we heard a commitment of uh, cities and local governments uh, towards uh, this uh, addressing the uh, climate emissions. Uh, uh, we know uh, how uh, global confidence of mayors on climate change and energy uh, has been also um, promoting these uh, uh, actions uh, among cities uh, and local governments uh, in the world. So um, this is going to be a, a very, very lively uh, discussion. Uh, we will be also hearing um, their uh, initiatives, uh, actions, uh, but we also would like to hear uh, gaps, uh, uh, some challenges, uh, how um, the leaders, uh, the cities uh, in ASEAN uh, member states um, struggle uh, in meeting those challenges, but we also have to discuss m much more about solutions. Um, I like what the uh, previous speaker mentioned, uh, uh, we can start with small action. Uh, but action, small actions that are concrete and small actions uh, that can also have a multiplier effect. So um, le let me uh, invite uh, distinguished mayors. Uh, we have here uh, Mayor of Kuala Lumpur, Datuk Mahadi Cheng Ang, I see here. And also we will have uh, uh, Mayor of Bogor, uh, he's uh, Chairman of APEXI, Dr. Bima Arya Sugiarto. Uh, he will be joining us a, a bit later. 
And we have uh, Lady Maya from uh, Iriga, uh, the Philippines. Uh, she's also uh, the uh, treasurer uh, of UCLG World and as well as uh, co-president of UCLG ASPAC, Mayor Mandeline uh, Elfalor uh, uh, Gasman. And we have a uh, mayor of Brick Municipality, Thailand, um, Mr. Surya Yikun. We also have uh, Mayor Gorontalo of Indonesia, Mayor Martin Taha, and we have a uh, uh, professor uh, from the uh, Guangzhou Urban Planning Association, Mr. Huang Dingsi. So I'm, I'm very, very happy to welcome you all, mayors uh, and uh, speaker. Uh, I, I know uh, you have been also working very hard in uh, addressing this COVID-19, and I really appreciate that uh, you have time uh, with us uh, this morning uh, to share and also to show uh, your commitment as uh, leaders um, in your cities and the regions. I am very sure uh, uh, participants um, will be also uh, very excited uh, to hear from you uh, about your initiative. So, Mayor Kuala Lumpur, um, you, you have been mayor uh, for quite some time, and uh, I know that you have been also uh, taking a big initiative uh, on uh, making uh, Kuala Lumpur uh, much a greener city. It's already one of the uh, beautiful cities that I like, actually. Uh, you have uh, also urban forests uh, in the middle of the city. You have uh, good public spaces. Um, Dato uh, Mahadi, uh, could you share with us and with the participants here um, what you have been doing, especially uh, uh, related to this climate uh, change and climate resilience? Dato Mahdi, you have uh, 10 minutes, and I will let you know when uh, we have one minute remain. Please, Dato Mahdi. Fellow panelists, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning to one and all. Permit me to extend my appreciation to our host today, the United Cities and Local Governments, Asia Pacific, UCLG ASPA. Thank you for the kind invitation. I am pleased to be here amongst mayors from many cities around Asia Pacific. I look forward to exploring more ways in which Palumpo City Hall can share its experience in managing climate-sensitive urban sustainable development. Ladies and gentlemen, as an introduction, Palumpo has come a long way since its start as a tin mining center in the 19th century. Today, Palumpo has a population of 1.8 million spread across 243 square kilometers with GDP growth rate of 7.1% per annum. As a capital city of Malaysia, we are a signatory of the Paris Agreement on Climate Change. We are committed to a Columbo that is dynamic, sustainable and resilient while at the same time fair and prosperous for all. The slide shows that we have formulated several master plans and blueprints. They are in line with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs, and addressing issues on climate-sensitive urban sustainable development. Indeed, these blueprints are the important documents that regulate all developments in Polo the master plans for Colombo are our bedrock. They and, and encapsulate the Colombo structure plan and the Colombo city. The Colombo structure plan underpins our mission of transforming Colombo into a city for all based on the aspirations of all Carolines. As a result of climate change, Kolumpo has seen extraordinary rainfall, rising temperature, frequent occurrence of flash flood, and brick storms. 
reducing carbon is the solution to make Kuala Lumpur resilient to climate change. Ladies and gentlemen, with this imperative responsibility in mind, we have developed our own low carbon society blueprint 2030 with the ambitious target to reduce 70% of carbon emission by 2030. This blueprint has three major trusts, 10 actions, and 245 low carbon programs. Kuala Lumpur City Hall is seriously implementing these low carbon programs throughout the city. Now, we have developed our roadmap as shown on the screen. Our roadmap with detailed low carbon programs by sectors is a step forward to achieve the status of Colombo carbon neutral city by 2050. The implementation of low carbon program is very important. I'm sure you will agree, nothing convinces people better than seeing and experiencing the viability of sustainability projects. Thus, visibility is key. Recently, we impose to real estate developers to utilize at least 30% of re renewable energy in their projects. At the same time, more solar PVs are to be installed in Polupo City Hall own facilities as part of our push for accelerated adoption of renewable energy. We are in the midst of identifying several locations for large-scale solar farming projects. Ladies and gentlemen, located in northeastern Kuala Lumpur, Wansamadu has been earmarked to become our first carbon neutral growth center by 2050. We are in the process of implementing the usage of free ride Go KL electric bus in Ponsimaju. We have also completed several bicycle and pedestrian networks with shady trees in Ponsimaju. Another 15 kilometers new green network is being constructed to link Ponsimaju and Kolumpur Central Business District. At the same time, a new green network is being planned to link residential areas such as Damansara Heights, Kenny, ha Kenny Hills, and Bansa Hills with the central business district. As the first eco-conscious township in Kuala Lumpur, once a we will play a crucial role in pioneering our carbon neutral journey so that other growth centers can co progressively transition into carbon neutrality by 2050. Ladies and gentlemen, the slide shows the neutral carbon sequential scenario for Kuala Lumpur by 2050. For this scenario to come to a reality, we must have a very clear understanding of the lay of the land. For that reason, we are undertaking a citywide greenhouse gas inventory development, <coughs> capacity building, and facilitation program. The core objective of this program is to track and analyze every source of greenhouse gas emission. This program helps us in creating a comprehensive climate action plan premised on hard data, actual hotspots of individual emitters and heat islands. Findings from the greenhouse gas inventory reports will be shared with other users so that everyone plays their part in managing his or her energy and water usage as well as waste generation. Indeed, greenhouse gas inventory reports are very important baseline study. We will also guide industries with support from federal agencies to increase resource efficiency, create a green circular economy, and explore more of the new green growth. 
Ladies and gentlemen, the overall objective of this climate sensitive urban sustainable development initiative is to achieve economic, environmental, physical, and social sustainability for all. We are fully aware that in order to achieve the vision of a neutral carbon city, collective effort is a must. Therefore, Outreach programs must be undertaken to engage with different groups of stakeholders in implementing the low carbon programs. The emphasis on partnership, inclusiveness, and equality are crucial for the success of the implementation. In Wasamaju, several low carbon programs are being implemented as follows. Installing solar PV on public buildings and columbus in our own facilities. Constructing new cycling and pedestrian network with shady trees. Providing new neighborhood park. Building new solid waste recycling center. Imposing rainwater harvesting system in new development projects and using LED streetlights. In line with the vision City for All, the video clip shows an evidence that we practice empowerment when it comes to our homeless community. We engage these citizens to run urban farming, besides allowing them to have the choice of working and selling the harvested products in the uh -huh. same neighborhood. They are, in a way, contribute to reduce carbon emission in the city. Ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, Extreme weather is the common occurrence in Kuala This gives us the more reason to make our city more resilient. And reducing significant carbon emissions seems to be the solution. We acknowledge low buy-in from the stakeholders, but we need to do more to change into low carbon lifestyle. We are firm in our commitment to the betterment not only of Kuala part of our region and, of course, throughout our planet. With that, Dr. Benedia, I end my presentation. Thank you very much. Terima kasih. Uh, the actions must be visible and can be seen uh, by the community, by the society, uh, but also can be felt uh, by the community, not only see, but also believe and are involved uh, in the actions. Thank you, uh, Dato uh, Mahdi. I hope you can stay with us for a while uh, since uh, I'm expecting uh, some questions uh, uh, given to you as well. So thank you and let's move to, uh, to other presentation as well. Yes, I will do. I will stay here. Yes. Thank you. Let's move to uh, the only lady mayor uh, in this uh, session, uh, Mayor Iriga. Mayor Iriga, uh, you have been also, uh, you know, participating in uh, several uh, sessions of UCH ASPAC. So thank you very much. And at this uh, ASEAN Mayors Forum, um, we have uh, many participants, uh, particularly from ASEAN. And uh, Iriga has been uh, affected uh, quite huge, uh, quite a lot by these typhoons. And uh, you also uh, have a really good strategies uh, in uh, having uh, resiliency in your society and your city. So, Mayor, uh, could you uh, share with us your commitment uh, related to these uh, climate uh, uh, actions and climate uh, uh, strategies as well? Mayor, you are also uh, given uh, 10 minutes. Okay, thank you, Dr. Nadia. Hi, Mayor Datok. It's so nice to see you for the longest time. <laughs> Um, well, first, um, the role of local government is very important in achieving climate sensitivity, urban sustainable development agenda. Since local government are frontline institutions that are responsible for providing urban development direction and for responding to the increasing service delivery requirements of their constituents. While empowering local government to develop their short, medium and long term plans and aligning local and national priorities the need to cooperate, coordinate, and marshal government efforts to address emerging concerns 
is really important in order to ensure effective and efficient fulfillment of global commitments that includes SDGs where no one is left behind. Adherence to Sendai framework on safety and resilience and attainment of the country's long-term vision. Addressing such concerns requires the convergence of efforts and partnerships among international partners, national government agencies, local governments and civil society to enhance vertical integration. My city, Iriga City, Philippines, has embarked on a program aimed not only on strengthening the four thematic areas, namely preparedness, mitigation, response, and recovery rehabilitation, but building resilient communities and families that can prepare, adapt, and transform in dealing with disasters and its effects. Developing a, resil a resilient community is fundamental to mitigate and adapt to climate change in the growing high den density urban centers. There is a need to enhance the adaptive capacity of urban centers in order to reduce their vulnerability to the impacts of climate change. Disaster risk and reduction and climate change adaptation initiatives were mainstreamed in the Comprehensive Land Use Plan, specify in our city's urban land use development strategy, and it is also integrated in our comprehensive development plan. Uh -huh. We have institutionalized the loca localization of the SG SDGs by integrating targets in our local plans and designating responsible uh -huh. actors with people's participation, uh -huh. adaptive uh -huh. innovative leadership, uh -huh. and it is important in guiding a learning organization through continuous advocacy programs on disaster resili resiliency and climate. The 2030 Agenda also recognized the importance of local level action, particularly through SDG 13, that take urgent action to combat climate change and its impacts. It is vital to improve education, awareness raising, and human institutional capacity on climate change mitigation but also to strengthen global resilience and adaptive capacities to the efforts or to the effects of global warming. Thus, the city has undertaken the following. We formulated the DRRM plan and climate change adaptation plan through series of workshops and people's participatory approach. Identified programs, projects, and activities were provided corresponding finding from local and other sources. We also have continuous capacity building for frontline service providers, engagement of the community and stakeholders in all aspects, strengthening of the RRM office on the area of manpower complement logistics, networking with other agencies and entities, information technology, and also partnership agreement with private individuals and group on the four thematic areas of the RRM. Engagement with the academe, business, and government sectors on the information education campaign, initiatives to radiate policies and information to all levels of the community. Since Region 5 is a typhoon-prone area and we are often visited every year by super typhoons, the city initiated the organization of all the RRM officers in the whole Region 5 to strengthen relationship among service provider and local leaders in building disaster resiliency and develop a common agenda to ensure implementation of the Sunday framework. Now, while implementing our efforts, we encountered common issues and challenges like meager resources available to finance our initiatives, lack of coordination between policymakers and service providers on prioritizing vulnerable areas and the required interventions and adaptability. However, we have programs and projects implemented all are anchored on the principle of livability, competitiveness, bankability, and good governance with the active participation of many stakeholders as possible. Now, we have a video. We prepared a video at least to, to um, show and to, to prove to you or at least to showcase our projects and programs and all other measures that we are implementing. So, Helmi, um, can we play the video? During my first term as local chief executive, our internal revenue allotment was 103 million pesos. Our local revenue was only 12 million pesos and our asset was only 200 million. We are landlocked. 
bypassed due to the diversion road that connects two highly urbanized cities, namely Naga and Legazpi City. We were stagnated for decades, which means we were really poor. That explains why health has never been a priority during my first term. We cannot even afford to provide all the basic services to our constituents. Not to mention that six natural disasters of our region, flooding, landslide, erosion, earthquake, eruptions, and typhoons. These are the impediments and hindrances, at the same time challenges, on how to make our city progressive and resilient. There were two subsequent super typhoons came and damaged our city. Milenio, 195 kilometers per hour, and Remin, 265 kilometers per hour. Flooding occurred up to 2.3 meters in the central business district. Soil mass movement created a dam of mud with its debris flowing through the built-up area of the city. Our housing project, in partnership with Gawad Kalinga, were all destroyed. Here comes February 2010, at the onset of El Nino. Wildfire occurred at the eastern part of Mount Iriga, damaging 700 hectares. It was the indigenous people and village officials who volunteered to arrest the fire. And now, COVID-19, the most strenuous and tough battle. For the first five months, we remained COVID-free city. But when the government opened the gates for locally stranded individuals, authorized persons outside residence, businesses, though there's really no dichotomy between health and business. But however, the sudden surge of positive cases is inevitable. All our friends, relatives, department heads, employees got infected. And I even had my COVID scare when I got exposed to them. I voluntarily quarantined myself until the official result of swab PCR test was released. Now comes Quinta, which aggravated the entire scenario, contact tracing at the same time, rescuing the evacuees, and not a pretty sight to see. After a week, here comes Rolly, a super typhoon with the same path as Quinta. I love Iriga so much. I was born here, I grew up here, and I will die here. This is the reason why I work 25-7, 100% dedicated and committed and doing my best to put Iriga in the map. Those experiences are our tipping point. We transformed into resilient, adaptive, and creative leaders. When we saw the community participation, everybody went out of their way to help. All sectors were passionately devoted to help every disaster that gets in the way. We realized that bridging leadership is indeed very effective to encourage everyone to share their sense of ownership, co-ownership, and co-creation. As long as the leaders set apart differences, committed to attain a goal, work collaboratively to all the people, equip, capacitate, and invest on human development, work as influencer, then advocate the law of the lead strategy, everyone will participate and cooperate to all endeavors. Now, due to the trust and confidence, our poverty incidence went down from 39% to 17%. Unemployment rate from 37% to 7%. Our era is 650 million pesos. Our local revenue is 130 million pesos. And our asset, which is usually the basis for borrowing capacity, is 2.2 billion already. We were able to pay UP Planades to mentor us with our CLUP, including our Climate and Disaster Risk Assessment, which is known as SIDRA. And it is also part of our ELA, Executive Legislative Agenda. Now we have our own city hall. All economic enterprises are earning. ICT building, gymnasium, dialysis center, expansion of the slaughterhouse, solid waste management compliant. City Health Annex 2 will be serving our people in the mountain area. Ongoing construction of the Iriga Amusement Park and also our Level 1 Hospital. Veggies on Wheels, which evolve into rolling store and satellite markets to assist the local farmers to earn and maintain their livelihood. We are SGLG Awardee, Seal of Good Financial Housekeeping, and other awards bestowed upon us by the national government agencies and international as well. But this does not stop here. We will continuously work hard and will deepen our commitment to resilience at the individual, institutional, and community levels. God bless us all. Thank you very much, Doc. Uh, Mayor Madel, um, 
you know, uh, you manage to uh, you, uh, do a lot of improvement in your city. Uh, poverty elevation uh, has also been uh, less, and uh, of course, unemployment also uh, is uh, getting less. And this uh, Fiji on Wheels, uh, this also has been uh, inspired other cities. And uh, during this COVID, uh, you also continue uh, doing this uh, Fiji uh, uh, on Wheels. Huh? I think this is uh, good that uh, it shows that uh, your city, your community uh, are quite resilient. So thank you, Mayor, uh, for uh, sharing with uh, participants today. Uh, on the uh, achievement and also actions uh, of your city. You did mention also some challenges. We will be discussing later uh, how these challenges can also be uh, uh, changed into, um, you know, um, solutions. Uh, so thank you very much. Let me uh, uh, invite now a uh, mayor from Thailand. Uh, let me welcome uh, Mayor Surya Yikun, uh, Mayor of Prick Municipality of Thailand. Mayor, we haven't seen you for uh, so quite some time, so it's good to see you uh, once again. Yes. Sawadika. Uh, sawadika. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Bernadette. And, and also, I would like to say, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh to all participants and to the uh, governors and mayors who attend this uh, kind of uh, sessions. In, I would like to share some of my uh, slide presentation. Uh, first of all, uh, in Thailand, you know, we normally local government uh, adopted in terms of global goal and uh, national policy to implement such kind of SDG in the local area. That's why before we start the program or we, before we start the project, uh, we have to think about or uh, we have to uh, adopt in terms of global goal and national policy to uh, modify and uh, conduct it in terms of local policy. Uh, in Brick municipality, we also uh, adopt some of sufficiency economy philosophy from the King Ramanine and SDG blend together, integrated, uh, and implement our activity in the area, not only the uh, 13 SDG, but also another uh, target of SDG, we also uh, concern and take it into account. So if we're talking about the impact of the global agenda in terms of climate change, we may say that we have at least five category of activities. For example, the first one, uh, waste management and backyard sufficiency farming. We, in brick municipality, uh, we try to use in terms of the local issue and local contact to run in terms of the waste management at least three steps. The first one is from the original point shot, that means from the household level. And the second, in the midway or in the community and uh, community organization, for example, like a religious institution, masjid, mosque, and temple. And the last, uh, if, if we take the garbage or the waste to the uh, station, that destination, we can, uh, we can produce or we can recycle the uh, trash and we turn the trash into composting. And the other activities that we have done in terms of the waste management after we uh, try to turn the trash to composting, we promote in terms of uh, backyard 
farming or sufficient farming to the village, to the school program, to the uh, people who live in brick municipality. And the second one, we find out the alternative energy is quite important right now, according to the green energy. We have a school, uh, school program for solar energy, and we have a solar roof in the community. That means in the most, we have a solar roof in order to uh, produce the electricity in the most and save the cost for the most in our area. And also the last one, we have uh, solar energy for water system, sub, uh, water supply system. In this case, we have saved in terms of economy and we have saved in terms of the environment for uh, our city. And also we have some sort of curriculum in the school. We teach the uh, alternative energy uh, for the children in the school. And the uh, solar energy is uh, as we selected for the green energy to provide some sort of uh, produce some water supply to the uh, people in big municipality. This is concern in terms of the protecting the environment and protecting the world also. And the third, we call a ecological restoration program. We every, in every year and every uh, official uh, ceremony, we uh, invite the people to join us in terms of the reforestation program almost every uh, where that we have uh, uh, even in the farm and also in the uh, on the street and near the official of, uh, near the office of the uh, government official the fourth one we have a disaster management program. A disaster management program is based on the community-based disaster risk management. We formulate in terms of the participatory approach with the villager, with the uh, stakeholder from the government sector, civil society, and uh, private organization to empowering the community to, and building their capacity to uh, manage in terms of the risk uh, reduction. And also, not only the organization, but also some individual, we try to strengthen the people capacity to cope with the disaster by reinforcing resilience at our local level. Last but not least, almost every activity that we have done, we try to moving forward into the resilient city. We also adopt uh, low carbon city and green city to implement in our area because we uh, believe that the villager or the people can uh, assist or can participate in terms of our activity to implement in their household, in their community. So not only in the community, but also in the school, we have the curriculum, the program in terms of resilience mind, resilient mindset for the teacher and for the student in terms of the mental, physical, emotional, and social uh, resilience. This is all our activity in pre municipality that so we call we have a slow life and easy living in Thailand we call Sabai Sabai City. Thank you very much for attending.
Thank you very much. Uh, the next speaker, uh, we can, have. Can uh, you hear me? Yes, can, we can, can hear, hear you well. Yes. Okay, okay. Thank you. We can also, uh, we could see you also your slide very well just now. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. So let's, let's move uh, uh, to Indonesia. Uh, we have a Mayor of Gorontalo City, uh, Mr. Martin Daha. Uh, is he here with us? Uh, I couldn't see um, him yet. Uh, okay, uh, maybe... While we are waiting for uh, him, uh, maybe he will be joining uh, a few minutes later. Uh, let me invite, um, I don't know if uh, Mayor uh, Bogor is uh, already available. Maybe not yet. Okay, let's, let's move uh, now. Uh, since this is a special event uh, for ASEAN uh, plus uh, India and China, we also invited a speaker from China, from Guangzhou. Uh, I think everybody uh, knows uh, about this city. Uh, it's the third biggest city uh, in China. Uh, we have a speaker here, uh, Professor Huang Bingxi. Uh, he's the uh, Vice President and Secretary General of uh, Guangzhou Urban Planning Association of China. So you also given uh, 10 minutes, uh, Professor. Please. Thank you. Uh, let me share the screen. Yes. Thanks for your kind introduction, Dr. Sarawi. And good morning, distinguished uh, mayors from the forum and also ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today is uh, quite a fruitful day for me, for the, for also for our colleagues in Guangzhou City to learn from the experience uh, of the Asian countries and also uh, where, uh, a lot of uh, cities in, 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 the, in this forum. Uh, today, on behalf of the working group of uh, Guangzhou's first uh, uh, SDG VRR report, I would like to share with you our working process and efforts on uh, achieving sustainable development. Uh, also, Guangzhou is quite a climate-sensitive uh, mega city, so, so today I, I will share with you some of our works. As we all know that uh, monitoring and evaluation of SDGs, UN SDGs in local level is quite important. And in, from, since the year 2018, uh, the voluntary local reviews uh, it has been the topic of the global conversation in the uh, high level political forum of UN. And this uh, we are our conservers uh, meet medium for locally sourced uh, information and mutual knowledge exchange at the local level. It's also uh, promoted by the UCLG and UN Habitat to launch such a VR series to provide uh, guidance and definitions to support the, the cities in the local level to knowledge exchange of achieving uh, the, the SDG goals. And also uh, in European Union and Brookings Institute, also they launched such, such kind of handbooks to provide guidance. And since the, the New York City was the first city to publish the VRR, and their practice also uh, achieved the finalists of the 2018 Guangzhou International Award for Urban Innovation. As part of the knowledge exchange uh, uh, sharing activities of our, the Guangzhou Award, the Guangzhou Municipality Government initiated the first uh, VRR report in the early 2020. As the city of over 2,200 uh, 2, years, uh, Guangzhou's history is filled with uh, uh, countless exploration and efforts to climate adaptation. Because of the location on the tropical center, our city ancestors fought with the heat, humidity, humidity flood, typhoons, and, to, and after the hard work, they developed, developed the city into the third largest city in China, uh, filled with Lingnan culture, business vibrancy, and openness uh, to all guests uh, to across the globe. 
Uh, from Joe's first VR report was jointly uh, compiled utilizing the relevant government departments, uh, professional research institutes, and social organizations with instructions from the uh, also SDSG China Hub and experts from universities. The compilation of the VRR uh, they were tied with the public engagement of our 2034 uh, strategic planning. It's also combined with the Guangzhou City Health Check and adopted quite a lot of uh, online and offline methods uh, to extensively understand the public's awareness of urban sustainable development issues. Together, we, uh, we got uh, more than 16,000 copies of the questionnaire and over 5,000 opinions and suggestions. The 2035 strategic planning of Guangzhou has implemented new concepts of pursuing innovative, coordinated green, open, and shared development. Uh, it aims to improve the uh, sustainability and livability of urban development by relying on, on upon the natural resources and focusing on critical problems of cities' environmental and social uh, resource covering capacity. capacity. Uh, and also urban security resilience. The plan covers the development uh, visions of uh, six strategies which can, which can be seen in this screen and uh, these uh, strategies are highly relevant to the 70 SDGs. Since the release of the uh, 2030 agenda, Guangzhou has taken uh, in account of in, in the, our strategic planning uh, and adopted over 70, 70 strategic measures which have developed, delivered remarkable results. Also, we know that uh, challenges and deficits are still exist due to the imbalance and inadequate social economic development. Uh, we be believe that as a city with a population of over 15 million, Guangzhou's uh, exploration on SDG 4, 6, 9, 11, and 15 uh, play are playing rather an important role. So we use uh, we focus on these five SDGs on our first VR report. Uh, also, we find that uh, according to this uh, forum's uh, main theme, the exploration and practices to achieve the 70 SDG goals are related to each other, and uh, it can be viewed as an integrated system. So throughout the, two, uh, the first uh, VR report of Guangzhou, we already find quite a few of measures and cases contributing to climate change adaptation. I will take some time to share with you in the next few minutes. Uh, uh, in response to SDG, SDG 4, we are strengthening the education, environmental and sustainable education to, to the society and to promote the knowledge of green development. We have ecological civilization education course on, 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 cam on campus, both primary school and middle school, uh, which are available to more than 2 million students across the city. We uh, have the, uh, also have a lot of activities to our sustainable development to, uh, to the general public. We also ex establish an uh, emission trading, carbon emission trading system which is not only for business, but also for the general risk, the public to promote a low carbon living style. Uh, for example, in, uh, uh, our Haiju Wetland Pack is also uh, recognized by the WWF uh, to provide same course on environmental education. Kids and young uh, people can uh, enjoy in the Wetland Park to see the natural the base solutions of urban de development. We also, uh, in response to SDG 6, uh, which is the water issues, we, are, we preserve and restore the, the, uh, the wetland system. Uh, we, uh, the former quarries pits have been transformed into lakes, and also we restore the uh, protection of wetland resource, resource systems and enhance ecological recreational functions. And in in response to SDG 9 on resilient cities, we use a lot of innovative approaches such as low impact development. And 
for the southern uh, uh, harbor harbor side uh, 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 or seaside uh, uh, areas, we do we. Uh, modify the traditional dams into this kind of uh, super coastal so called simple dams to provide give stronger uh, uh, ability to resist the, the typhoons, but also provide recreational and and industrial services. And a sprawl system is uh, also developed based on the tidal patterns and also new statistics of the uh, stream weather set uh, wet climates. And green energy is also, and, and green uh, finance is also another kind of uh, importance. Um, the the unit uh, GDP energy consumption drop one third, and we have uh, 28 industrial parks drafted into circular transformation. And uh, we have uh, quite a, uh, the largest uh, uh, green finance uh, uh, infrastructures in Guangzhou, we are aiming to the, become the largest emission trading platform. On, in response to SDG 11, uh, cooperation, uh, we have cooperation with the World Bank to promote the sustainable urban, cool, urban cooling project. We call them the Cool Cities Action Plan. At the citywide level, we have uh, planned and control the wind corridors identify heat vulnerability uh, areas and promote green buildings and strong cities. And at site level, both in urban regeneration and new town development, we cooperate with the web world and all experts and, and adopt new cooling strategies, which is uh, environmental friendly and, and carbon free. And Professor, uh, as early as, yeah. Professor, okay. I'm sorry, uh, we have only uh, one minute left. Could you please yeah. conclude? We have only two, two more slides. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And this is the electric buses. And we have also the ecological restoration for both uh, the cloud pathway, like linking the gardens in the city, and also a lot of uh, wildlife uh, protections uh, to provide uh, the wildlife uh, bio uh, biodiversity. And to wrap up, as President Xi uh, last September uh, announced that China aims to bring carbon emissions to a peak uh, by the year 2030 and achieve carbon neutrality by the year 2060. And action plans and to achieve carbon emissions free are being formulated in both in national and local levels and will be soon be published. This year, Guangzhou's VR report will also uh, pay more attention on this kind of uh, uh, SDG 13 and other low carbon development measures. And thanks again for the, your attention and look forward to more exchange with the colleagues in this uh, forum and UCLG Asia Pacific. Thank you. Thank you, Professor, uh, for a very good uh, presentation. Uh, thank, you. Let, thank you very much. Uh, let, let's us uh, now uh, move uh, to Indonesia, back again to Indonesia. Uh, senang sekali uh, ada Bapak Martin Taha di sini. Selamat pagi, Pak Wali. Apa kabar? Silakan, Bapak. Uh, Ada waktu 10 menit. Apa bisa mendengar suara saya? Bisa, Bu ya. Bernadia Sekin. Waduh, ya. Ya, selamat Dengan pagi, Bapak. Bapak. Terima kasih hadir kembali Terima di kasih, acara ASEAN News Forum ini. <laughs> ya. Silakan, Bapak. 8 men apa, 10 menit ya. presentasi, Siap. silakan. Terima ini, kasih, uh, Ibu Ada Sekin. wali kota Kuala Lumpur, kemudian ya. ada wali kota Iriga. Ada wali kota Afrik yes. dari Thailand dan juga um, yeah. dari Guangzhou. Pak Bima Arya kebetulan masih dengan WAPRES, uh, Vice President yeah. of Indonesia. That's why uh, maybe he will be joining a bit late. Ya, yeah. silakan Pak yeah. Martin. Baik, thank you very much. Uh, Sekjen <laughs> ULG. Baik, uh, yang saya hormati Ibu Sekjen, Ibu Bernadia. Yeah. Yang saya hormati Bapak Datuk Mahadi, Wali Kota Kuala Lumpur, uh, Miss Madeline, uh, Wali Kota Iriga, kemudian Mr. 
Surya Yakun, Wali Kota Prik, Thailand, dan Mr. Huang Ding, Chief uh, Perencana Senior, dan seluruh peserta virtual meeting yang saya hormati. Baik, terima kasih atas kesempatan yang diberikan kepada Kota Gorontalo untuk memaparkan uh, hal yang berkaitan dengan perubah pengendalian dampak perubahan iklim. Jadi komitmen Kota Gorontalo terhadap pengendalian dampak perubahan ah, iklim. Ya, Gorontalo City Government commitment to controlling the impact of climate change. Jadi uh, Gorontalo ini adalah sebuah kota yang ada di Indonesia bagian timur, ibu kota provinsi Gorontalo, luasnya itu hanya kira-kira 80 km persegi, ketinggiannya uh, 0 sampai 500 meter di atas permukaan laut dan terdiri dari 9 kecamatan. Kemudian keadaan uh, iklim, suhu rata-rata kita itu 27,3 derajat Celcius, tertinggi itu 35,6 derajat Celcius, dan terendah 18,8 derajat Celcius. Kelembapan rata-rata 82,3 persen. Curah hujan tertinggi sebesar 245 mm. Kemudian uh, demografinya, jumlah penduduknya itu hanya kurang lebih 201 ribu. Kemudian kepala keluarga sebanyak 63 ribu 315. Kepadatan penduduk rata-rata 2.500 per kilometer. Nah, rencana pembangunan jangka menengah daerah kami termasuk di bis, misi di bidang lingkungan, itu yang pertama ada dua misi kita kembangkan di dalam uh, lingkungan ini, pengendalian dampak lingkungan. Jadi yang pertama meningkatkan ketersediaan infrastruktur yang handal di semua sektor publik. Kemudian mengembangkan kualitas hidup masyarakat yang religius dan berbudaya. Nah rencana pembangunan jangka menengah uh, daerah kita ini 2019 sampai dengan 2024, strategi kita dalam rangka menyediakan ruang-ruang terbuka hijau, sistem pengelolaan sampah terpadu, Kemudian meminimalisir tingkat pencemaran udara. Nah, kebijakan yang kita lakukan, penyediaan dokumen kajian lingkungan hidup dalam upaya penyelenggaraan pengelolaan lingkungan hidup. Yang kedua, peningkatan ketersediaan sarana-prasarana pengelolaan sampah. Kemudian optimalisasi pemanfaatan teknologi dan penerapan pengelolaan sampah melalui TPS 3R. Tempat pengelolaan sampah reduce, reuse, and recycle dan bank sampah berbasis pemberdayaan masyarakat. Jadi yang mengelola adalah masyarakat kita. Kemudian pengendalian pencemaran dan peningkatan kualitas lingkungan hidup perkotaan. Dan pemenuhan ruang terbuka hijau minimal ada 30 persen. Jadi green open space kita itu uh, sekarang sudah malah lebih ya, sudah 32. Sudah di atas 32 persen. Yang dulu pada tahun 2018 itu baru mencapai kira-kira 23 persen. Nah, dampak perubahan iklim ini daerah-daerah uh, rawan bencana, indeks resiko bencana kita itu 69,23 atau tergolong sedang dengan resiko tinggi terhadap kebakaran hutan dan lahan. Resiko sedang terhadap gempa bumi, banjir, kekeringan, dan cuaca ekstrim. Nah, kecamatan, ada beberapa kecamatan yaitu ada Tiga kecamatan, kecamatan Kota Barat, kecamatan Hulun Talangi, dan Lumbur Raya dengan 14 kelurahan di dalamnya merupakan wilayah yang paling rentan uh, kejadian bencana alam. Kemudian banjir dan tanah longsor, itu banjir selang tahun 2020 kemarin di saat mulai-mulai pandemi COVID, itu total luas genangan akibat banjir 93,69 hektar yang tersebar di tiga kecamatan, termasuk tiga kecamatan yang rentan banjir yang saya sampaikan tadi yaitu Hulontalangi, Kota Timur, dan Dumburaya. Dengan intensitas banjir sebanyak 14 kali. Karena adanya uh, curah hujan di hulu yang begitu besar. Bencana Talan Longsor tahun 2020 terjadi 8 kali dan tersebar di Kecamatan Kota Barat dan Kecamatan Dumburaya sebagai wilayah atau kawasan perbukitan. Kekeringan, dampak akibat bencana kekeringan, berkurangnya ketersediaan sumber air baku, gagal panen, berkurangnya ketersediaan air bersih, dan timbulnya wabah penyakit. Nah, apa yang menjadi kebijakan pemerintah kota Gorontalo? Jadi, kebijakan kita 
uh, the policy of Gorontalo City's government, yaitu pembangunan infrastruktur. Dalam penataan dan pembangunan infrastruktur yang menjadi salah satu misi dari pemerintah kota Gorontalo, mulai dari penataan kawasan kumuh melalui program Kotaku. Ini yang kita sudah tanggulangi dan kita sudah lakukan, sudah 97 persen kawasan kumuh kita jadikan menjadi kawasan yang tertata rapi. Kemudian perbaikan sistem drainase perkotaan. Sudah mencapai 1.162 km eh, meter persegi panjang saluran drainase yang dibangun. Kemudian peningkatan spam, sistem penyediaan air minum. Ada 27.431 unit sambungan uh, pemenuhan air bersih. Kemudian uh, total kapasitas air kita ini ada 500 liter per detik yang melayani kurang lebih 200.000 penduduk kota. Penanganan sanitasi buruk yaitu 42.823 unit jumlah rumah yang terlayani prasarana air limbah yang baik. Jadi tata kelola air limbah ini uh, menjadi perhatian kami karena itu akan merusak lingkungan. Kemudian penanganan longsor dan cek dam ada tiga lokasi yang kita lakukan yaitu Kota Barat dan Hulun Talangi serta Dumberaya. Kemudian pembangunan TPS 3R, eh, tempat pengolahan sampah reduce, serius, and eh, recycle, itu ada 10 unit, ada di 8 kecamatan, untuk mengurangi jumlah sampah yang diangkut ke TPA. Investasi infrastruktur kotaku dalam rangka untuk pencapaian target 100 pemenuhan air bersih, 0 kawasan kumuh, dan 100 persen penanganan sanitasi, ini sudah Uh, total sudah 20 miliar yang kita keluarkan selama tiga tahun ini untuk menangani baik drainase, kemudian air bersih, kemudian toilet atau MCK, mandi cuci kakus, kemudian jalan, jembatan, persampahan, dan sistem pengolahan air limbah, SPAL. Jadi ini yang kita lakukan dalam rangka untuk menangani supaya bisa tercapai uh, Kondisi 100 0 100, 100 kawasan uh, pemenuhan air bersih, kemudian 0 persen kumuh, dan 100 persen penanganan sanitasi. Penerima manfaat ini dan serapan tenaga kerja sejak tiga tahun ini kurang lebih 2.453 orang. Dengan nilai yang diterima oleh masyarakat sebagai upah mereka itu 6,46 miliar baik itu air bersih, drainase, kemudian jalan jembatan, MCK, persampahan, dan spal. Kemudian pembangunan lingkungan hidup. Capaian luas RTH hingga tahun 2020 sebesar 32,11 persen. Yang tadinya saya sampaikan hanya 23 persen, ini sudah mencapai 32 persen atau melebihi ketentuan uh, batas minimal 30 persen, yaitu RTH publik itu uh, luasnya kurang lebih maaf ya 1097 hektar kemudian RTH privat RTH alami sehingga totalnya menjadi 2537 hektar pengendalian pencemaran udara melalui uji emisi juga kita lakukan setiap e, berkala setiap 6 bulan kemudian penetapan lahan pertanian pangan berkelanjutan seluas 1800 183 hektar dan kawasan pertanian pangan berkelanjutan seluas 459 hektar. Jadi kita tetap menyediakan uh, lahan pertanian yang tidak bisa dialih fungsikan untuk menjadi bangunan maupun pemukiman. Yaitu kita mempertahankan agar lahan pertanian pangan berkelanjutan masih tersisa kurang lebih 459 hektar. Kemudian kesehatan, uh, ini kesehatan ini terutama kita menghadapi covid Alhamdulillah kota Gorontalo ini penanganan COVID-nya terkendali dan pada sisi hari ini 45 terkonfirmasi positif, itu hanya tiga orang yang ada di rumah sakit dan yang lain ada isolasi mandiri. Penanganannya kita melalui kebijakan sebagai instruksi Menteri Dalam Negeri yaitu penerapan PPKM Mikro yang diperluas dan dilakukan inovasi bagi kota Gorontalo yaitu penanganan pembat, pemberlakuan pembatasan Uh, berskala mikro dengan menempatkan berbagai komponen dan elemen masyarakat yang ada di situ dari puskesmas, 
kemudian Babinsa Babin Kamtimas dari Kepolisian dan Tentara, kemudian aparat Kelurahan, RT, dan RW. Saya kira itu Ibu Bernadia apa yang dapat saya sampaikan. Terima kasih 10 menit waktu yang diberikan kepada saya. Bila hitafiq walaidaya. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, very, very clear uh, Pak Martin uh, presentasinya. Thank yep. you so much. Uh, I think a lot of uh, uh, achievements you have uh, in your city uh, and also uh, you manage uh, to keep a good uh, percentage of uh, green space. Eh? Thank you, Mayor uh, Taha. I'm happy here to also welcome uh, Mayor Bima uh, from Bogor. Uh, he's uh, also the chair of uh, APEXI, Association of uh, Indonesian Municipalities, Indonesian Cities here. Uh, selamat pagi, Pak Bima. Uh, apa bisa dengar suara saya? Good morning. Selamat pagi. We, we have here uh, several mayors, uh, uh, Pak Bima. We have also Mayor of KL, uh, Mayor Prick, and also Mayor Iriga, and Mayor Taha, Gorontalo, as well as a professor from Guangzhou. <laughs> Um, Mayor Bima, you, you have been also with the ASEAN Mayors Forum for quite some time. Uh, I still recall um, you uh, also joined us uh, in uh, Bangkok in 2018 and also in the Philippines. Uh, I, I'm not sure if you are aware that uh, ASEAN Mayors Forum received uh, already accreditation uh, from this ASEAN uh, as the only entity affiliated uh, with ASEAN. So thanks, uh, of course, to you. Uh, for uh, great support uh, to this uh, ASEAN Mass Forum. Uh, I think we discussed uh, quite a lot uh, uh, at that time uh, how uh, local governments can play a bigger role in ASEAN. So I think this is uh, good news uh, that finally uh, ASEAN Mass Forum received accreditation uh, from ASEAN. So Mayor Bima, uh, we have uh, 10 minutes for you. Uh, to uh, address the importance of uh, climate resilience, climate actions. Um, and we know that Bogor also has um, already a lot of uh, actions uh, as well as uh, good strategies uh, how uh, Bogor uh, is addressing this uh, impact on uh, climate change. So, um, Kang Bima, 10 minutes, please. We couldn't hear you. I think you are muted. Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes, very well. Thank you. Yes, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Bapak Ibu, climate change is a real thing. Many symptoms and impact have happened to many people. Indonesia is actually one of the most vulnerable country since we are mostly coastal area. 50, more than 50% of Indonesian cities are located in the coastal area, which make uh, most of them are vulnerable, even though the impact of climate change also hit the land cities. The most impacts are flash flood, rub flood, that happened in coastal, drought, and so on and so forth. So urban climate action should maintain the local development plan. So the biggest challenge for the local leader today is what I have been uh, calling as mainstreaming the uh, urban climate action. Urban climate action should be a priority for the local leaders because you know uh, most of local leaders are more interested to focus on uh, populist issues like education, uh, waste management, and so on and so forth. And uh, according to our experience, climate change could be analyzed because of, uh, based on valid data scientific research. Uh, so uh, when the local leaders implementing the idea, implementing the program which focus on uh, climate action, it should be based on uh, academic research. It should be based on valid data. So this is the importance in good collaborations with academia, with think tank, so uh, the policy makers uh, can be assisted in making uh, policy formulations. 
So uh, I always emphasize the need for uh, having a good collaboration with Pentahelix, with academia, with communities, with mass media, and also, of course, with NGOs. And uh, uh, it is true that commitment and priority of local leaders is the major issue in Indonesia. Most of the local leaders are actually weak in implementing commitment and priority for the issue of uh, climate change. Mostly more interested in focusing on issues like infrastructures and economic development. And uh, we are observing that most of local governments are stickling on data management and research development. We do have uh, research and development in our authority. We call it uh, BAPEDA, but not many local leaders realize the importance of strengthening uh, the team for doing the good, uh, good research. And another problem is also the issue of uh, financial. A huge dependency on uh, central government allocation is also a fact. We have a limitation for allocating uh, fund uh, to focus on uh, climate change. And most of local leaders are depending so much on the assistance from the national government. So uh, today uh, we are campaigning for our counterparts, mayors, uh, local leaders to have a good cooperation uh, with uh, any other uh, alternative uh, source of funding, not only depending for from the local, from the central government, but also uh, from uh, the uh, uh, philanthropes, agencies, uh, corporate, uh, social responsibilities, and so on and so forth. And uh, many cities have actually done a good programs, good activities uh, in prioritizing the climate actions on several issues like the uh, emission reductions, such as energy efficiency by LED public lighting, renew renewable energy by waste to energy or waste power plan, drug prevention, such as bio, uh, bio uh, activities, uh, flood pre preventions, such as develop water pond to catch the water, and Brixy Wave by mangrove gardens, and also uh, greening, such as green open space development, mangrove plantation, or some cities uh, also develop unique policy through uh, the bride and the groom must donate three seeds or plant trees. So before the wedding, it is compulsory for our citizen to donate three seeds or plant trees. And several platforms could also be engaged with the climate actions, such as uh, the long-term uh, development plan, which also mainstreaming the climate action. And climate action should be one of the indicator for Adipura. Uh, every year in Indonesia, there is a very prestigious competition for uh, choosing the cleanest city in Indonesia. So climate actions now uh, can be uh, one good indicator to determine who is the winner, who is the best city for uh, gaining the uh, uh, Adipura uh, award. Uh, and some other activities also important, also noticeable. Uh, uh, because uh, now we are inserting the activities of climate actions in several sub-national reporting platforms like Local Government Responsibility Report or LPPD, Greenhouse Gases Inventory Report, and also Climate Village Program or Pro Climate Report. I think that would be uh, the uh, uh, explanations uh, from my perspective. Uh, basically, we do hope that uh, our counterparts, uh, more and more uh, local leaders, can uh, implement the issue of uh, climate change and also based on valid uh, research, based on uh, collaboration activity with Pentahelix uh, actors. Thank you very much, Bumer Radian. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Pak Bima, uh, for uh, sharing with us uh, some of the achievements you have in Bogor. 
as well as uh, challenges. Uh, uh, we hear very loudly here the message from you that uh, we have to have uh, evidence-based uh, decisions uh, that rely on the uh, data and also uh, research. And you also highlighted that uh, we cannot depend anymore uh, uh, funding from uh, central governments only. Uh, I think this is uh, a very important uh, how also local governments can access uh, different kind of resources. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Mayor Bima, uh, for uh, sharing with us. Uh, I have, uh, because of the time, uh, although there are a lot of questions uh, given to you, mayors, uh, but because of the time, uh, we couldn't uh, dis discuss uh, much uh, further. I have uh, just uh, two questions here. One is uh, to all uh, mayors here. Uh, this morning, we heard the presentations uh, from the central government, right. because uh, what we are discussing today is about vertical integration. Of course, the importance of horizontal integration. So um, uh, can I ask uh, every mayor here, and of course, uh, Professor uh, Guangzhou from Guangzhou, uh, what message you, 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 ex uh, you have for uh, central government? Do you have any certain expectations uh, from central governments in order to uh, have this synergizing uh, uh, national action strategies with uh, local actions and uh, strategies as well uh, related to the climate uh, uh, actions? Can we have uh, from you, uh, Mayor, um, Mayor uh, Kuala Lumpur? Yes. Do you have any expectation from uh, central governments or any other uh, institutions to synergize uh, and to have uh, this good vertical integration on climate actions? Yes, uh, I actually um, this uh, hear very clearly from Mayor Bima in carrying this uh, or implementing climate actions plan, we actually need um, some uh, finance, enough funding. So here in Kuala Lumpur, I do see the same uh, issues existed here. And uh, if I can relate a little bit more, barriers to urban climate actions, apart from finance or funding, we also have a problem in terms of use the technology and as well as the lifestyle change. These are the three important points that really uh, limit the urban climate action in, in this city or in Kuala Lumpur. So if I can have more fun from the central government, that'd be very good. And technology, again, there's another sector which is, you can uh, actually create kind of um, engagement or you need to have higher learning institution which is under the control of the federal government to actually have more uh, people or if you are talking in the university get more people, uh, students to understand the concept of low carbon society with that understanding then you can see that the the way that we're going to translate and change our lifestyle because it is very crucial True. for you to have um, uh, a, a low carbon uh, society or city the people must change the, men, the people must acquire new lifestyle which is yeah. low carbon yeah. lifestyle yeah. that's my quick comment yeah. to that yeah. Dr. Uh, thank you yeah. very much i, I agree uh, completely we have to really change our lifestyle and definitely engaging uh, young people uh, for uh, having, uh, of course, not only young people, but uh, everyone uh, for uh, having a, a much, uh, you know, um, maybe what we call it a sustainable consumption. Uh, so we really have to think uh, quite well uh, how uh, we can, our lifestyle uh, can also be good for environment. Thank you very much, uh, Dato Mahadi. Any, any mayor would like to answer that question as well? Um, yes, yes Mayor, Mayor. Yes. Um, you know, while implementing all our efforts, we have our strategies, best practices. We always um, encounter issues like um, we have meager resources available. 
So uh, we hope that the central government will be uh, generous enough to finance some of our initiatives. And also sometimes we um, often uh, experience the lack of coordination between policymakers and service providers on prioritizing vulnerable areas and the required interventions and adaptability. So um, I just hope that the central government will play as um, 